Hello, hello. How you doing, Jason? Good. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Thank you once again for uh, hanging out. Everybody, uh, please give a warm welcome to Jason, our friend, and very often uh, co-host and guest and all sorts of other things that he's, uh, <laughs> he's always doing here. Um, I appreciate you hanging in. Uh, just sure. so you guys all know, Jason's only here to hang out because I asked him to. Um, because I, as you guys know, I, I, I hate being in the studio just by myself. So uh, I figured I'd have a buddy to talk to <laughs> while we show the art. And he can look along with everybody else and uh, comment and do whatever the hell he wants to say. Uh, at your leisure as well, Jason, of course. Um, so really quick, because I'd like to get this started. Um, I want to post here. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work. Let me see. Hold on. So just to let everybody know that here, that's... Okay, that's one link. That's to Carl's channel, to Carl's collection. And here's a second link. Those are links to his two um, latest videos that he posted this week. And he doesn't seem to be here right now at the moment, but that's understandable because it is Carl Sodergren's happy birthday today. Hey, happy birthday, Carl. Yeah, so happy uh, birthday and all the best to you, Carl, uh, from one Superman fan to another. I wore this on your behalf, so I'm hoping that uh, at some point after your celebrations are over that you might have time to tune in. Um, yeah, so, but there you go. Happy birthday, my friend. And um, yeah, I hope you had a great day. And okay, so let me see what else. So I don't have um, a link for a video for Karen's channel because she hasn't posted a video yet but i um, would like to let everybody know that she told me that she will have a video very very soon maybe as early as tomorrow morning so that would be awesome and a lot of fun so um yeah i'm looking forward to seeing that karen and um what else is there anything else i think that's it but let me just quickly say um everybody sorry uh, nikki b once again, couldn't find your um, the link to this coming Friday show, but everybody, please tune in to see uh, Nick's sales and chat show every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. And you can always do that here at youtube.com slash the EXP. This is what the handsome, handsome gentleman looks like and the beautiful Amy hiding behind the Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, yeah, so check that out. As always, every week, I believe there is another show this week. Um, yeah, so uh, always some great fun to be had, as well as some affordable art and occasional higher-end art. Well, please check that out if you can. Okay. And what else? What else? Is there anything else? I believe that's it for the promos for today. Let me jump in and say hello real quick to everyone. See who's here. Southern Comic Geek, uh, Neil McAhone. Okay, you're ready. Good to see you, man. Um, Southern Comic Geek, Jason, uh, no Bob Kane or Blue Lines. Nope. And, um, oh, Blue Lines? There might be. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't know if this is a serious deal, but, I mean, anything goes. It just depends. You make me an offer, and I'll tell you if I can do it. So, yeah. make 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 the offers. If you want. Um, good evening to you, Hart, my wonderful friend. Good to see you. And look at that. Jason Madwig is he's here with us in the studio and here with you in the room. That's awesome. You get a double dosage of you, Jason. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds, exactly. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening to you, Mr. Red Jack. Happy to see you here as always as well. And the Brickster. What's up, man? Number one Marvel fan. Whoa. What's up? What's up? Good to see you. Been a long week. Is it has it been a long weekend? Finally, some fun time. Awesome. Glad to have you here. Um, I, I think by long weekend, you just meant like it's been a long weekend for you. It's not an official long weekend Correct. in the United States, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The spice will flow. I don't know. Why are you always the first guy to put things that go over my head, man? 
will blow. I'm just trying to think of like, what the hell is he talking about? I wonder if it's a Dune reference with Dune coming out lately. Oh, I, I'm not a sci-fi guy, as you know. I haven't seen <clears> Dune, <throat> so I wouldn't know. So I'll leave that up to you and somebody else to confirm whether that's a Dune reference. What's up, Marcus? Good to see you. Uh, CJ, evening to you. Good to see you, as always, of course. Uh, long live the fighters. It's another one that's going over my head. I don't know. I don't know. Who's, who's fighting tonight? I don't know. Um, doozies will abound. I don't know about that. It's mostly more like affordable lower end type art. I don't <clears> know if you <throat> consider those doozies, but I appreciate the optimism, CJ, always, of course. <laughs> Frank, Brockle or Brock Hell? Or, or neither. I, I need to know, Frank. I need to know. Um, good, to, good to see you all the way from Arizona. Lovely uh, to have you here. Thank you. Um, hello to you, Vivian, and uh, welcome back, Jason. And uh, Vivian, so everybody knows, will for the first time ever since I started my channel, will not be here keeping track of things for me and helping me out. So I'm on my own, but I got Mr. Lag uh, Ladwig here to help if I should need it. I hope <laughs> I'll be the spotter. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, Karen, there's Karen. Hey, Karen. And uh, always saying hello to everybody in the chat. Look at that. Lovely to have you here as always. Um, Gabe Carino, hello to you. Good to see you. Um, uh, hello, Karen from Vivian. Uh, John Brown, as always, a pleasure. A good evening to you, sir. Uh, of course, I already said hi to you, CJ. Thank you. And oh, Cap! Hi, everyone. Haven't been able to attend for a while owing to different reasons, but managed to make it the same. Wow, are you here for the duration? It's been a while that you haven't done a duration, my friend. Oh my gosh, that would be so awesome. Wow, just to have you commenting your awesome comments as always. I appreciate it. I hope so. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Karen saying hello to you. And you probably already I answered. I did a generic. Second high all through. Okay. So try to cover all the bases. <laughs> you didn't deem her worthy of a solo high. You you made it to all. You know. I couldn't. Oh. I couldn't keep up. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Uh, look at that number one Marvel fan, of course. Hey, and you as well. And look at that. There's a heart saying hello to everybody, hey, and you as well. Yeah. Cool. And all right, so everybody's saying hello. They're flying back and forth. And Marcus says, the star of the latest comics then video. Who is? Who? Who? Certainly not me. Who is it? I don't know if I saw the latest ones. To be honest, I kind of, I was getting a little like overwhelmed by the stickness. And I was like, yeah, I kind of need to take a break from those videos. So I think I, I think I missed the last couple. Yeah. Um, how are you? There's your hi, y'all. Aloha, peeps. What's up, Carl? For like the fourth week in a row or something. He's back as a regular. Yeah. Awesome to see you again. It's always, Carl. I hope you're doing well. I hope this means that you're feeling much better these days. So thank you so, so much for tuning in. And we got hello, highs, highs back and forth. Hellos. Hi, all from Jesus. What's up, Mr. Cabrera? Then... The New York Mets fan, or as uh, I like to call them, the Nye Mets. Anybody remember that? The Nye Mets are my favorite squadron. Anybody remember that? No. Really old uh, Simpsons uh, oh, reference. Geez. That's Apu. Apu, who I think was canceled, right? They canceled Apu? Yep. Okay, he's gone. Yeah. yeah. No, he was... I forget, the, I forget the theme of the show, but he... He was acting like a white. He was trying to act like he wasn't an immigrant, so he's trying to put on like a, a white person accent. And he sees a guy with a, a, a Mets hat, right? And he, he knows nothing about sports, let alone American sports. And he's like, "Well, the Nye Mets are my favorite squadron." <laughs> doesn't know that it's team. Doesn't know that <laughs> Nye is New York. You know, that's like a thirty whatever year old episode. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, howdy, howdy, Dwayne's a pain. What's up, sir? Good to see you as always. And who else we got? Okay, everybody. Hey, what's up, Tony NYC Jr.? What's up? Good to see you, Tony. Evening to you, my friend. And many happy returns to Carl. There we go. I'm posting a new video tomorrow. She says, Wow, 9 a.m. Everybody, thank you. Thanks, Karen. Cool. Awesome. Looking forward to it. 
and um, not my birthday. Why do you say that? Oh, I see. Right, right, right. Because it's not this Carl. It's that Carl who likes this guy a lot. Yeah. Carl with a C. Yeah, Carl with a C. And uh, Karen's last video was sick. <laughs> it was. It was very, very sick. Very much so. Uh, kind of glad you're uh, getting props on the CGC forum. Oh, that's nice. I was last there. There was only like 11 comments, so I haven't been back since. I might have to check <clears> again. <throat> Uh, will your new video include large shipping? Okay, you, you won't get over that. You can't get over that uh, Jack Kirby unboxing video. Uh, also, researching how YouTube works. It's very true. Comments left really help push the channel out for more to see. Yeah, exactly. Comment, it's, it's um, for on YouTube, it's interaction, Tom. It's interaction in general. And in particular, comments, liking of the comments, and liking of the video. Um, yeah, even unliking the video. It doesn't count as a negative. It actually counts as a positive. YouTube just counts it as more interaction, an extra interaction, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, please, everybody, if you don't mind, um, right here, below here somewhere, right around here, there is a thumbs up icon. If you could click that if you're watching. It's not, it's not asking much. You don't have to subscribe to me. I don't need you to subscribe. That's fine. But click the thumbs up. That'd be cool. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, who else? Who else? Well, Smocky Poo Poo, what's up? Always a pleasure to see you, of course. Lovely to see you. I hope you and your wife and your lovely daughter Mika are doing very well. Yo, 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 Sam Maroney in the house from Ohio. What's up? Good to see you, Sam, as always. And big boxes in this one. Okay. Um, Wow, Karen, sounds like you've been busy. Okay, yeah, let's get on with the show here. Color guides. Uh, COA, don't know what that's for. Hellos. Uh, any Mannix, not for me tonight. Um, the Jason of both worlds. Nice one. Look at Cab getting into it. Look at that. Hey, Mark, my Singaporean friend. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Uh, Vivian, Mr. Oh, hello, Mr. Red Jack. Hey, Carlito, what's up, sir? Good to see you. Uh, what's today's episode about? I thought we might uh, talk about uh, you know the way grass grows and paint dries. <laughs> you know, I thought you know something interesting for a change. You know, really riveting stuff. Um, Spice Girls reference. I don't know about that. They had a few good songs though. Uh, Viva Forever. You like that one, Rick? I like Viva Forever. It's very sweet. You know, sweet and cute and yeah, just sweet, like a little. Uh, Ballady song. Um, oh my God! Don't know what that's for. Since I'm late to the comments, whoever wants to do a movie talk, you, apparently you want to do a movie talk, my friend. We might have to get the Dirty Dozen together to do like a private one because there's ways that we can do private screening. So it, it feels like we'd be, you know, streaming live. For us, it'll feel the same way as it always does. But nobody else, other than whoever I invite, would actually be seeing anything happening on the channel. So we might, we could do that if you want. We, we, you know, if, 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 if enough of the dirty doesn't want to do it, we could do it. Um, hello, Pad Bear. Pad Bear from, remind me again, Wales. I think it's Wales. Definitely somewhere in the UK, and I'm going with Wales. What's up, Pad Bear? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I hope you're doing well tonight, and I hope you're uh, feeling um, continuously better from your open heart surgery. You seem to be around on the chat shows, um, so I'm going to take that as a yes. Lovely to see you, my friend. Thank you. Um, so let me ask, since you always have to ask, let me answer, I should say. Um, so as you already know, Marcus, but some of you may not know, um, as far as time payments go, look, I don't have some huge dealer inventory. When I sell art, usually I'm selling because I need to raise or want to raise money to buy other stuff, which means typically I need the money now or ASAP. So that's why I typically, as a rule, don't do time payments, but I always tell you guys, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you wanna throw the offer at me, you need to tell me what you guys would like to do in terms of, you know, what type of time payments are you talking about? Uh, how much of a down payment? How much time in between the, each other payment, the amount of the payment. Like, I need to know that stuff, and then I'll decide, all right? So 
case by case basis. So it's on you guys to let me know what you're offering with that. Okay. Will you so take wait. NFTs? I definitely do not take NFTs. And I would hope that that whole thing just dies a, a, <clears throat> a permanent death. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. So it, seems, it feels like it's died, you know? But I think I'm sure they're still alive, but like, I think it's kind of been dying, you know? Uh, not knowing anything about doing the same as you know, not like Star Wars. Yeah, thanks. I do know something about Star Wars. I mean, I've seen them all. Well, at least I've seen the first three many, many times. Um, I'm coming to see Cab. Hi, Carl. Jason Lyle. Uh, how do we? What? Was well, I think that was the um, comics then uh, video. <clears throat> Were you with it? Uh, yeah, I haven't watched it actually, but I think it was on. There was a clip on the meet and greet with Adam Kubert, and I was there. So if it... oh, okay, okay, cool. Hey, that's pretty neat. What's up, Chicago? Everybody, don't forget to tune in next week. I don't have a thumbnail to show you, but uh, next week at the usual time, eight o'clock p.m., five o'clock. Uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, uh, 5 o'clock Pacific. I will have our friend Tom McDonald from Chicago here to do a show and tell with me. So that'll be fun. Please check that out. And, oh, look at him. Now he's in. He's in a few minutes after I did his promo. Um, what's up, Nick? Good to see you. Um, yes, please. 47. I got 55 here on my screen watching. 18 likes. Yeah, please hit the like. It's just it's the thumbs up here. Right down here somewhere. Just click that, please, if you're watching. It doesn't cost you anything i don't get money for it i'd appreciate it thank you uh jason ladwig was in the latest oh okay sorry i think that's the one i put up sorry um hi sorry i let you guys talk amongst yourselves hey murdoch good to see you uh ruben needs to uh, what to be a hot takes channel to get <laughs> interaction yeah everything i do other than a few um unboxing pre-recorded unboxings is is live content so when everybody comments live, you know, for the most part, they don't feel the need to have to leave comments down below the video after the fact. But some of you, like Marcus, does or do. So that's kind of nice. I appreciate that, Marcus. And the few of you who do leave me comments, that's nice. Um, John C., what's up? I should take the side of blue lines. Well, I have before, as you know. Um, Jello, John, Jello. Uh, Dan Evan, what's up? Good to see you. There he is. Whoa, popping in a bit late. Awesome. You missed all my love and attention that I gave you, Carl. Yo, happy have birthday, Carl. Yes, happy birthday. <clears throat> and you'll rewind You'll rewind the uh, 14 minutes that you missed later after the show tonight. And you can see uh, that, I, that we, we spoke about you. Um, you, were, you were being missed and uh, feted as well. So check it out after. Uh, I thought this was a movie episode. Why, what's everybody obsessed with the movie episode thing? What, what are you talking about? Tell us what you want, what you really, really want. Everybody's into the Spice Girls tonight. What's happening? Yeah, very nice to see 50. I got 56 here on my screen right now, so that's really cool. Thanks, Nick. Uh, please, again, everybody, just hit the thumbs up. Let's see if we can get the same amount of thumbs up as there are people watching. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't make me any money. It doesn't, you know, it's not much to ask. It really isn't. Let's be honest. Um, any Vogo deals, Sam Maroney? I don't know what Vogo is. Didn't you Buy one, get one. Buy, Buy one, get one. one. Jesus. What are you out of your mind? What do I look like? Happy birthday, Carl. Look at that. From one Carl to another. That is so awesome. And, of course, again, from Karen. That's very sweet. Much appreciated. Um, I guess I spread the word. <laughs> Take a handshake and a pat on the back. Not for artwork, I won't. Um, <laughs> Woohoo, Tom McDonald with, yeah, there you go. Um, happy B Day, excellent, yeah, very much. Uh, yes, Ruben did, and now up to 28. Yeah, 28 is pathetic when there's 56 people watching. That means only 50% ratio, please. That means, come on, 28 of you just need to click that button, please. Yeah. God, it's like, I think I've been asking the world of you. All right. Wow. Thanks all for the love. <clears throat> Excellent. I appreciate that. And I'm glad you appreciate it. Too. Oh my God. Margaret Lee. What? Whoa. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Hi guys. Never been to one of these before. Margaret, I don't think you've ever been to any one of my shows. What? Wow. We spoke about you last week. <laughs> I think it was yeah. last week. Yeah. yeah. Last week we spoke about you. And who was it that somebody mentioned? That you're just a youngin, which I assumed you were youngin, but somebody mentioned that you were a youngin of only 22-ish. If that's the case, wow, that's awesome. Rare female plus a youngin. 
Awesome, Margaret. Anyways, whatever your age, um, so happy to see you here. Wow, so cool. And I'm glad that you somehow found the channel. Um, so I appreciate it. Thank you. I wish I had Legion art for you, Margaret. I wish I had Legion, but I, I can tell you right off the bat, if you want to save yourself time and don't want to hang out with everybody, although you should because it's really fun. Um, it's very interactive. And I talk to everybody in the chat a lot. Um, but but yeah, I, I don't mind telling you. No Legion art. Sorry. Um, happy birthday closer to Fitty. Yeah. Uh, the art sale came and went so fast tonight. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Look at all the love. Look at all the love. Wow. Any wheel spins? No wheel spins. Great to see you here tonight, Jason. I did it for you, baby. Not only because I know how much you love Superman, and I do too, but also because it's your birthday. So that's why I did this. So I'm glad you appreciate it. Now with 34, I appreciate it. That's still pathetic though. No offense. That means there's still like 22 people who haven't done that yet. Hit the uh, thumbs up here, please, everybody. Uh, any new pickups, Jason? Any new pickups? Yeah, you can talk. Yeah, talk to normal one Marvel fan while I'm saying hello to everybody else. <laughs> Just the uh, Mark Texiera page I just posted on CAF this past weekend. Um, there we go. That's my only new acquirement. Yes, we did, Margaret. Yes, we did. What? <clears throat> You're even younger. What? <laughs> wow. Awesome. 21. That's amazing. Seriously, it does my heart proud to see somebody that young. Because in this hobby, typically young are people like in their early 30s. Right? It's so rare to get 20 somethings, let alone early 20s. Wow. She awesome, just dropped Margaret. your viewer average in half, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. More than that. More than that. Um, Margaret, just for you, if you ever come back on, an, on another on another um sales show, I don't do them often, you know, a few times a year. But if you ever come back, boy, I, I'm gonna make sure I have to try to find some kind of Legion related art just for you, even if you don't buy it. Just so you know, I have some. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. Um, thanks, Bernard, for sharing the link in the calf. Thanks, Nick. Oh, okay. Thank you. If that's how you heard about it, I appreciate it. Um, to you, Murdoch. Thank you. Um, have to do something still in the fence in regards to the likes. Yeah, you just keep thinking about it, Hart. Uh, thanks, Bernard, for sharing the... Uh, okay, Jeffrey C. Also, yeah, but Jeffrey C., you're aware... You're, you're always aware of, of what I'm doing here every week. You know, you know, I do my stuff every Sunday night. Thanks for the heads up. I think I'll stick around. Awesome. Awesome. That's very sweet of you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, Dewey, what's up? Laughing at heart. Uh, text piece is killer, Jason. Well, worth. Oh, yeah. The text piece. Yeah. Spending Thanks, your bro. own text budget. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I left you a. Uh, I left you a... Yeah, I appreciate everyone's comments. Yep. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Who cares about everybody else's comments? I left you a comment. <laughs> All right? That's what matters. All right. Uh, sick intermission memes? No, <laughs> there are not. And holy crap, a lot of comments. Okay, let me just get the whatever. Hey! Dewey. <laughs> Dewey's here. Well, I didn't see the comment. Which one was it? Oh, that's right. I forget that that's, that's his name. Here on uh, on YouTube, right? I always expect to see DUI because that's his name. So hello to you again, of course. That's Hart's <clears throat> friend, everybody. Hart's friend, just so you know. Um, and thank you. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate that you appreciate it. Thank you again, Murdoch. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, man. Um, so hello. Could have picked a nicer community to get into. Honestly, you guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. And you can only make it better, Margaret. So thank you. Uh, yeah, congrats again to uh, you for your text. Gosh, my daughter is 25. <laughs> exactly. Now you see what I mean, uh, Tom. That's 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 the thing, right? Amazing, Margaret, that you are so young. You're truly a precocious collector. There you go. Uh, thank you. I'll be back. You can count on it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I only, just so you know, I only do my shows. I do my shows every week, and it's only typically on Sunday nights at this time, 8 o'clock uh, Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Um, and sometimes it's um, – usually it's like a show and tell. Other times it's just a hangout, although every show I do is like a hangout because it's very interactive. But uh, So sometimes, yeah, it's just hanging and chatting. Um, other times it's a roundtable discussion with like at least three other people. So different types of shows, but it's every Sunday night. 
Um, so if you want to subscribe and, and hit notification bell, that's a good way to sort of always know what 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 type of show I'll be doing that Sunday. So um, otherwise, just remember it's Sunday night here, uh, and it's and the channel name is my name, Ruben the Collector. So easy enough. If you can remember my name, then you'll you'll remember the um, the channel name. Um, so this is a great show. One of the few shows I try to attend regularly. That's so nice of you. Uh, of course, as always, we just hang out, view great artwork and chat. Exactly. And that's, that's really what I, I love to do. And apparently a lot of us do. So, um, thank you. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, what's up Caesar? You're back. You're back again. Uh, nothing yet. And you never did tell me last week uh, why you disappeared for like a month or, or whatever. Uh, okay. Oh gosh, thank you so much. Wonderful to become more involved in OA community in the last few years. That's very sweet. Uh, I just sent Ruben a photo my fiance took of you and Kasara's apocalypse. Whoa, so Thanks, cool! Tom. Awesome. I won't see it because I've I've learned now to keep my email client shut when I do my show because otherwise all I keep keep hearing are these bling bling. <laughs> Bling, bling, bling throughout the uh, live stream. And I, yeah, it gets me angry. Um, very annoying. So how many, many shows nowadays? This one's really nice. Thank you so much. You're such an amazing person. Comic Art Boston, thank you. You're so, so sweet. Uh, time to get claimy. Yes, it is. Let me just jump into that. Sorry, sorry. Didn't expect so many comments. Wow. Uh, my favorite little begins. Um, yeah, so there you go. So everybody, Nick and I finally have the... Same amount of people on our screens. I also am showing 61. Um, so that means it is 24 of you who haven't hit the thumbs up button, which is, I don't know, down here. Shit, hit the thumbs down. I still get credit for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me negatively. If you want to hit the thumbs down, I don't care. <laughs> Just hit some thumb, you know? All right. Okay. So, everybody, thank you. Let us get into the show. Um, you ready to do this, Jason? I'm ready. Okay, excellent. So let us go into where we have all the scans and the slides. And so we're going to start off with the first piece. The first piece is, uh, so they're all numbered as usual, as I've always done it, by, dash, and then the number. So that's what I would hope you would please to try to claim anything. Just put by, dash, and whatever number you see. Um, so it's zero, 01, zero, that's zero, 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 01, zero, two. So the first one is I'm starting with zero, zero. Um, just so you all know. Um, all the, and just as I'm telling the important information about payments, like six people dropped off. Okay. So for payments, because I have art here that some of it's from my very small inventory, some of it's from my collection, which I don't really want to sell, but I feel I need to, you know, pad out the, the amount of pieces I offer. Um, some of it is from consignments. So it's from different sources, different people. So for most of the stuff here, I'm not I'm not doing PayPal, okay? Long story short, PayPal screwed me. I woke up one day, I logged in, and suddenly my account had, uh, what do you call it? Uh, limits. Yeah. My account yeah. had limits. No explanation, no nothing. Suddenly, they froze my money for three weeks, and they told me anything above $2,300 in a month. Not in a day or in a week, in a month. Hmm. Anything above twenty three hundred, they're going to hold for three weeks until they can check that it's all copacetic. Like until they make sure that yeah, the money is like you know legit. What? I've heard of that happening to other folks too. Okay, so I'm done <laughs> with them unless I absolutely have to. Um, for some pieces, if I make a deal on them, I will actually ask you to do a PayPal payment. To somebody else, not to me. Anyways, whatever. So generally speaking, it, it's not PayPal unless I tell you it is. Okay. What it will be for the most part is I will invoice you and you will, that in, the invoice will take you to my website and it's a, a secure, so it's as secure as any other payment system online and you'll pay with a credit card online through my website. Okay. That's the majority of the ways that I'm going to do the payments. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's it. Um, but like I said, for different pieces, it might be different things. And oh, don't forget also, if you try to do deals and, and pick, you know, try to do a deal for multiple pieces or whatever, um, uh, keep in mind, you may be picking one piece that's mine and one piece that's from somebody who's, um, consigning art, which means, uh, and since I don't, I don't, in this case, I don't have the consignment art with me, 
you would have to pay shipping to one person and to me. So just keep that in mind. But I'll tell you, if, if that situation arises, I'll let you guys um, know, of course. How do you want to do payment for the What If 31 artwork? <laughs> uh, wire transfer. Uh, this way, there's guarantee that, that you can't screw me after <laughs> because I don't trust you. And uh, yeah, that's about it. You know what? I had so many people ask about that's probably the most asked piece I ever had. I can imagine. And over the years, I would have sold it, but people were always like wanting to go lower than I was asking. And over the years, the price went higher and sure. higher and higher. Yeah. And now it's like, yeah, it's not, no, nobody's going to want to pay what, what my price is, but whatever. Um, okay. So uh, let me see. So PayPal bastards, that's right. Uh, um, anything important I need to know? Let's see, okay. Credit card and debit card. I, honestly, Carl, I don't know what you mean by debit. I, I, all I know is I invoice you. And you click a button from, from the invoice, and it takes you to my website, and you're supposed to pay with any number of credit cards. I don't know about – I guess when you get there, it'll tell you if debit is available. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm sorry. I know in the United States, you guys have, like, dual cards that's for credit and can be used for debit. Yeah. I don't know if that exists here in Canada, but if it does, I don't know about it. Um so yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, man. I don't know if debit's available. Um, so the Canadian money launderer. I am not just to the CRA. I am not a Canadian money launderer. Uh, three month <laughs> wire. Uh, do you take payment in million dollar chocolate bars? I do not. Uh, setting up the teas. It's not. It's not for sale. So uh, okay. Uh, sorry, Carl. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into it. So the first piece. Um, it's from a collection. I actually. The, the, the reason it's numbered zero, zero is because I kicked it out. I decided I wasn't going to offer it because I don't want to sell it. But then I was like, oh, whatever. I already made the slide. I might as well offer it. I don't think anybody's going to want it except maybe Mickey would want it, but hopefully not. And then I get to keep it. Um, and most of you wouldn't care about this, but I really, I just, I just really love it. Um, so let's see that first piece. Again, it is zero, zero by zero, zero. And here we go. So this is a Mike Miller piece from the series Injustice 2 from number 41. It's page 10. It's a nice half slash with um, a beautiful image of Supergirl. And not only do you get that beautiful image at the bottom. I personally, the reason I love it is because I love Supergirl anyways, but I love her haircut in that bottom panel. Mm -hmm. And what I really love about it is that in panel 3, 4, and 5, you see how she got that haircut. Basically, oh, yeah. by using her heat vision to bounce it off the mirror and, and cut her own hair. Seems like so, a dangerous way to try to cut your hair. I think so, too. But don't forget, the super family, they're probably very, like, they've got precision up the wazoo, I think, right? <laughs> I would think that they're they're pretty precise on, on how to, you know, control the, the, the heat vision stuff, right? So, um, yeah. So, oh, and, um, yeah. Uh, so, another thing. Um, just wanted to say, okay, hold on. I'm jumping back in to read what you guys are saying. So we have credit debit cards here. Yeah. Let's, uh, oops, let's, you let's use debit card for all the things you would use a credit card. Oh, okay. Thanks, uh, Margaret. Uh, yeah, Margaret's a fellow Canuck, uh, everyone, uh, another awesome Canadian in case you uh, didn't know. As you predicted, so, Mickey claimed it. Oh no. Did he? Mm -hmm. I don't see Mickey. Or let me see. I don't see it. Ah, oh, shit. Are you serious? <laughs> shit. Shit. <laughs> ah, oops. Ah, okay. I'm not, not that I, I, I don't mean to. <laughs> Mickey, I don't know if you were here when I was saying what I was saying um, earlier. Um, so, okay, let's just make it official. So, zero, zero. I'll, I'm writing it down now. So, Mickey. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, let me come back to you guys now. Mickey, I, I don't know if you were here listening all along, but I, 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 it's not that I don't want you to have it. It's just that I wanted to keep it. I, I, and I didn't, ah, ah, whatever. But if I, if I couldn't own it, I'm happy you do. Okay. At least that's that. And that's the honest to God's truth. So I wanted to keep that one. I shouldn't have showed it. Anyways, whatever. I'm just pissed at myself now. <laughs> Whatever. I'm so stupid. 
And other pizzas that I really want to sell, I bet you they won't sell. You know, that's how it always goes with these things. But anyways, whatever. Again, I'm mad at myself. So stupid. Whatever. Okay. Um, yeah. So there we go. All right. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's jump into uh, the next piece again. <laughs> yes, of course you're happy. Of course. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for uh, getting me to 40 likes, everybody. But there's still 20 of you. If you're there's 20 of you watching or 21 of you watching right now that haven't hit the thumbs up button right down here, can you do that, please? We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And um, best reaction to a sale ever. <laughs> what can I tell you, man? Like I said, unlike other sales you've seen, I'm not just a dealer guy, I'm primarily a collector guy who sometimes deals, and so. You're gonna see my my collector emotions come out. You know, yeah, it's tough. It's it's uh, it's tough. Okay, yeah, Tom. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna offer him six hundred bucks to buy it back. And you know what? Knowing Mickey, he'd probably refuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, look at that! How'd you get here so fast, Mickey? You weren't here when Ruben first introduced the piece, exactly. But he when he hears Supergirl, he he's it's like he's magic. Poof! He just poofs. He pops in. All right, <laughs> let's continue with the show, everyone. Um, so the next piece, so this will be by number one. That is a John Ramita Jr. and Mark Morales piece from the century. It's uh, issue number eight from 2006. It is page three. You get century in three out of, of the four or five panels, I should say. Um, and almost full figure images in all three of those century shots. Um, so shocking to believe this is already from 18 years ago, um, but really lovely art. And although he doesn't typically act as Ramita Jr.'s inker, I actually do think uh, Morales did a really fine job here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really, really like that. That's very cool. Um, and yeah, so uh, $350, uh, that is buy number one um, for anybody if you are interested. Uh, I wanted to mention everyone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that, uh, yes, Carl, I know, I know, see, you, you know what I'm, you know what I'm <clears> talking <throat> about, uh, the sometimes dealer, correct, yes, I heard you, oh, yeah, nice, 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 okay, um, let me come back, I just want to say quick that I'm going to try to, uh, uh, go as quickly as I can, I'm going to try to, if I can, and you guys know me, I like the talks, all right, so it'll be hard, I admit, but I'm going to try to basically speak and once i'm done speaking about the the item hopefully it's roughly 30 seconds or less and then uh, once that's done unless jason notifies me that there's like an offer or, <clears throat> or a claim or whatever i will end it and just go to the next one and this way we can kind of speed it up and uh because markets wanted it last time if you're all interested in doing so i'll do a recap at the end i'll let you guys decide i typically don't plan to do it i kind of rather just deal right away but if you want to do a recap we'll do recap whatever all right but i'm gonna try to do it quick i'm gonna try to rifle through the the the, the initial uh 36 pieces just fyi uh quickly okay all right um <clears throat> so here we go uh let me get back to this um right so this next one will be sorry so one last look that's by number one hey the ramita jr piece and by number two is this next piece everyone so this is a very affordable 23-year-old uh, <clears throat> piece by Dick Giordano, the legend himself, um, from Batman, Hollywood Night, issue number one, page 10. Um, I really love this page just spe specifically because it, 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 I, when I looked at it, it reminded me a lot of the staging and storytelling of Jose Luis Garcia Lopez mm -hmm. um, in the first panel and in the third panel. Like the look, the third panel in particular, the way he, he was able to get those four people in there, but it's so nicely composed that it doesn't look like they're all squeezed in and squashed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, just things like that. And that's something that Garcia Lopez is a master of. Um, but the other thing is, is that this being 2001, this is much later in, in uh, Giordano's career and life, actually. Sure. Um, and to see him do beautiful stuff like this that late, I thought, you know what? This is it's really, really nice. Um, just so you know, I mean, look at look at the posture uh, again, uh, reminiscent of Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, the brunette at the table in the first opening panel. I just, I just the natural 
um, a way that she's just sort of leaning forward in her chair and, and putting all her weight on her elbows, you know, supporting herself with her elbows on the table. Mm -hmm. Just stuff like that. It's just gorgeous. Um, so whatever. So I figured whatever, uh, uh, just a nice uh, way to get something affordable by Giordano. And uh, yeah, that's 175. And again, that's by zero two. I think Tom's um, taking that, Tom McDonald. Oh, it, oh, okay. Did that just come in? Yep. And Tom, excellent. So that is buy number two. Let me write that down. We'll make it official. So Tom McDonald. There we go. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Um, very nice page. Glad you picked that up. So, oh yeah. Awesome. Nice. Dick, uh, <laughs> nice, nice dick grab. You guys are awesome. Nice, Jeff. <laughs> um, thanks, Tom. All right. Excellent. Let's move on. So from there, we will go to buy dash zero three. And for that, um, we go, we're going to go back and forth between DC and Marvel. Just so you all know, because you guys are always wondering, there is an equal amount of DC and Marvel. Okay. With a handful or so of non DC and Marvel things thrown in. So um, it'll be I, I, I've got it set up so that it's DC, Marvel, DC, Marvel, DC, Marvel, and an occasional non-DC Marvel. All right. So um, the next piece, as I said, by 03, here it is. So this is a splash page from Marvel Adventures Spider-Man. It is issue 29. It's the page 11 splash from 2007. Uh, unbelievable, again, that this feels like it's converging on another two decades ago. Mm -hmm. um, insane, but uh, it is by the ever loved here uh, online in the art online comic art community, Pop Man, inked by Norman Lee. You get an almost full figured Spider Man um, together with the gray gargoyle, Thor's old nemesis, which is really, really cool. Um, as the, 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 the dirty old bastard chases these uh, two little kids, I, 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 I have to say, I don't know why. Why the supervillain would be after two innocent young kids, but um, I don't know. Hopefully, Spidey stopped them by the end of this issue. Um, <laughs> but uh, lots of fun, anyways. Uh, it being from the Marvel Adventures Spider Man series, uh, it makes it uh, more affordable than uh, from the main Spider Man series would be. So, there you go. Um, what does it say here? I would have claimed, but I didn't want someone to say I grabbed Ruben's dick. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, mother, sister, mother, sister, <laughs> Mon Art with more on Sundays. Yeah. Forget Spider-Man. We need Chris Hansen to stop this one. That's right. I miss Chris Hansen. I love that show. All right. So let us move on, everybody. The next one is by 04. And for by 04, we go to DC. And this is a Jan Dursima. I don't That's know if she says Dursima or Dursima. Um, I've never had an opportunity to ask her. So this is from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. It is not a splash, but it is the first page of the issue. Um, a five-panel page. Um, yeah, Advanced D&D. &D. And I never read the issue myself. I, I heard that it was making a bit of a, a comeback, I guess probably because there was the D&D &D movie not that long ago. I think they did a Dungeons & Dragons mm -hmm. movie, right? yep. uh, a couple of years yeah. back or so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, there's not much I can say about it because I don't, I'm not familiar with the series. I, I don't know any of the characters um, on this. Uh, but there you go. It's uh, I, I, the only thing, the only other extra thing I would want to say is I'm just, again, uh, again, I guess when you get older, time passes you by so much quicker, right? <clears throat> I'm, I'm like, I Definitely. can't believe this goes that far back to like 1990. It's like, what? Right. It's crazy. Holy crap. Like, I cannot believe that. 34 years holy shit so um anyways that's there that is by number four um <coughs> take a note of that for later if you want and let me uh you're still in remedial D, &D now <laughs> uh let me go to buy number five everyone so for buy, buy number five um it is a piece uh going back to marvel it is a two two um what do you call it? two slide a two slide piece because the color image you know they will it's it's a wide it won't fit on one on one slide so here we go by number five by your friend and mine 
So cool. Mike Perkins. Uh, this is from the Carnage series from 2016. It is a double page splash featuring the symbiote inside that, I don't even know what you call that big sort of dish thing, burning in effigy. No, literally burning away. Um, and then you get that really, really, really killer headshot of him on the right-hand side, which is beautifully juxtaposed against, um, I believe her name was Juju Beal, Juju Beal or something like that, up in the left, right, uh, uh, upper left-hand corner, I should say. Um, so always really uh, enjoyed the art in this series. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, so there you go, double, double pager from Mike Perkins. Uh, that is, again, by number five, and he penciled, as always, penciled and inked this. And let me see. We got, um, um, it is actually, in fact, not mine, uh, my friend Jeffrey. It is not mine, this one. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad you think it's sick. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, that's right. When one is not enough. So let me actually, um, uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, let me actually here put it here. So yeah, you get a better look at this in what it looked like as a published image. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's the sound effect uh, so that you know that he's uh, basically being burned alive in hellfire, if you will. Uh, and you got some creepy dudes up there at the top. Um, and, and that, by the way, just so you all know, in case you can't really tell through the scan, um, that's all pencil work up at the top. So everything oh. above, yeah, everything above the burning uh, carnage is all just left in pencil for the special effect. Um, so it's just pure pencil, no inks um, at all. Okay. And there you go. And then one last look here. And there we go. And I guess this will be here as by 05 for, uh, I guess, at the recap at the end of the show if anybody is interested so much work okay. in mike's pieces <clears throat> i'm sorry so much work in mike's pieces oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah he goes through a lot of ink we'll say that <laughs> yeah stir fry for sure yeah um okay so let us go to the next piece and the next piece here everyone from there we go to dc this will be buy number six so for buy number six we have this uh, basically, you can call it a pinup. Um, what it is, is um, somebody asked earlier, um, will we have blue line tonight? We do indeed. This, I believe this is the only piece. So this is the Yvonne Hayes blue line pencils and Julio Fajeda uh, original inks um, of the Justice League. And this was done for the Inkwell Challenge um, from 2020. So it is indeed unpublished. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know, it's a yearly challenge where a whole bunch of inkers try their hand out at inking a piece of art, all, all the same piece of art by a particularly chosen penciler. Um, yeah. And so it's a lot of fun. And this one was the sample by Julio Fajeda. Um, of course, if the, uh, Ivan Hayes pencils were there underneath, the inks, uh, you would be looking at probably something closer to like 3,000-ish or so, something like that. So there you go. So I just thought that's a, just a fun piece. Um, um, to, to If you like the Justice League, it's a fun piece and a cheap way to get a nice mm -hmm. uh, uh, piece in Yvonne's style. Because well, it is his art. It's just that it's just it's blue line, blue pencil. Um, holy affordability, Batman, even for blue lines. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Unpolished. Absolutely. Yes. What are blue lines? Please. Love you, Von Hayes. Yes. There you go. Excellent. Okay. Everyone, thank you so much for listening to that. So that was by 06. And thank you, CJ. Appreciate it. Um, for saying it's a nice piece. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. And, and Fajeda did a, a magnificent inking job on that. So um, thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the next piece is by 07. Okay, let me get back in there. And so for this, we have, let's check out what we have here. By 07, everyone, is, so this is George Perez, and there's a little bit of a, a little bit of information I can give you on this one, everybody. 
So this is from Wally Woods Thunder Agents, first issue. Number one, it is page four from 1984, so exactly 40 years ago today, or 40, 40 years ago this uh, this calendar year, I guess. Um, so here's what I want to say, a couple of things. So it was a 10-page story, and George was scheduled to pencil and ink it, and he did start pencil and inking it, and somewhere along the way got sick. And Dave Cockrum, of all people, had to finish inking George's work. Mm. But um, George did manage to finish, I think, four or five pages, pencils and inks himself out of the out of the story. This is one of those. So uh, this is one of the few pages that is pure pencils and inks. The only other thing um, I wanted to mention, just for those of you who don't know, that lovely lady that you see there on this page, that. Um her name in this comic book is named Phoenicia, and she's a belly dancer. Now, many of you don't know, but George's wife, Carol, she used to be a belly dancer, and she she worked under the name Phoenicia. And so this character actually is George's wife, Carol. Um <laughs> Who's he? Des he he does he decided to change her, um, or not change her, but basically that's her. That's how she basically he, it's modeled after her, uh, both in look and in um, in name, in in stage name. Um, so you looked like you wanted to say something to me, Jason. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say that Nick has claimed it. So oh, you can please interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it's good something. history. I wanted to hear the whole story. <laughs> oh no, and I appreciate that, but I do want you to know that even if you interrupt me because somebody claims it. I'm still going to tell the story because okay. I want people right. to know the background history information on it. You know? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So thank you, Nick. So here, so let me make it official. There we go. And let me write that down. So seven. So Nick, and there we go. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, let me get this off. Um, yeah. I, 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 I want you all to know that. <laughs> Then I had asked Jason here in the studio with me as a favor. He's only here to hang out. I admit he doesn't have a job to do. But I did tell him, please, since Vivian's not helping me tonight, if you could just, while I'm talking, because I'm when I'm talking about the artwork, I'm not in the chat. And if you see anybody claim or ask a question about the art or make an offer, please let me know right away. And he said, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But instead, he let me, he was so polite, he just let me speak. But I speak wanted to hear the story, and I didn't want to interrupt it. I appreciate it. But like I said, interrupt me first, let's handle the All business, right. and then I'll, you know, it's interesting information. So I still will give the story afterward, because anyway, I want right. people to know. You know. I don't want to be shortchanged the trivia. Oh, no, no, that's, yeah, for sure. Okay, excellent. So thank you. Now that we got that straight, um, everyone, we will go to um, number eight. And here, let me just quickly, oh, look, he says, I love this book. Oh, and it has the origin of Phoenicia. Also, excellent. There we go. That makes it better. So, yeah, very, very cool. Um, I'm glad it goes to somebody who really, really appreciates it. And look at that. Look at the timing. Six minutes to dinner. He's got to go eat, too. Awesome. Awesome. I buy them. And some of them are um, consigned. Um, in honor of Nick's claim, next watch started at 11. Right. Uh, guest shaming. I do indeed. I do indeed. I remember having to save money for this talk. Yeah, because it was two bucks. I remember. We're like the same age, basically. So I remember. There was so much money. Uh, you had one job, Jason. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. It was a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Two bucks when your comics were costing 60 cents. You're like, holy shit. I can, I can buy yeah. three comics and still have change left over, you know? Yeah. yeah. So believe me, I, I, I remember those days. So I, six minutes to dinner for Nick. Yeah. Okay, everybody, let's go to number eight. So buy number eight. Um, so it's a smaller illustration um, by Chris Stevens. It is mixed media. I believe it's Copic marker with white paint. Um, that's what it appears to me to the best of my ability as I, I look at it up close in person. Um, it is, as you can see there, um, it's on a thicker... It's like a thicker, a stiffer, let's call it a sticker, a, a stiffer board. 
And uh, there's you can see the measurements there. Um, so just for comparative reasons or comparative purposes, um, to give you an idea um, of what the, the you know where the price came from, I I'm not that familiar with with Chris Stevens's prices to be honest, and I didn't know what the value is supposed to be. So I asked some friends, and they told me that it should be a little bit higher than this. And I I don't know. I just felt like this was the the right price, so I just kind of left it here, but. I know that at OAX, Chris was doing painted um, headshots, um, but tiny, tiny ones. I think they were two and a half to three inches tall uh, for 150 bucks. So do do with that what you will, um, but that at least will give you some sort of measure for uh, comparison uh, to try to figure out what his um, stuff is worth. So um, copacetic. Yeah, nice. I like that. Um, so yeah, so there you go. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what his, um, what, what Chris charges for his commissions. No, no idea. But like I said, a couple of friends told me that, uh, I would be safe uh, at this price. Um, so that's it. So that's where you go. Yeah. Um, Ruben, the phone a friend option. Nice. Um, so there we go. It is indeed a Felix artist. Absolutely. Um, there you go. But, you know, Felix being a busy guy as he is, I didn't feel like having to reach out and, and you know, bother him just to ask him, you know, what, what, what this would cost, uh, to get done as a commission, um, by Chris. So like I said, that's why I reached out to a couple of friends. Um, Carl says not my focus, but this is a totally fair price. So I appreciate that. Then I'm glad I got it right. Um, hard is hard. Yeah. It's a wild, wild world. Okay. Excellent. So done with that one that is buy number eight everybody let us come back to you for a couple of seconds thank you to everybody who has tuned in since we started 72 of you five dozen people really appreciate that let us go to the next piece the next piece uh we jump back to dc and it is buy number nine by the legendary jim aparo and this is from 1995 everyone it is a half splash as you can see um a green arrow there in the first panel and it is 250 dollars uh it is inked by jerry fernandez and it is inked by the anniversary 100th issue so that's also kind of nice and um comes from towards the um end of jim aparo's career um got some action there in the last panel um people getting shot and shot at and with uh, green arrow jumping out of the way <laughs> of those bullets in that final panel. So that's kind of fun. And let me see. Marcus says that Nick needs this. Really? Yeah, Is he's he... a DC collector. Well, he's a DC guy, but I don't think he's a green arrow guy. He's a green lantern guy. I know that. You know? Wow. That's cool. Uh, Nick went to a panel. Isn't that Phoenicia? It is not. <clears throat> Bye, Phoenicia. Uh, nice page. Thank you. And thank you. And that's coming from a Marvel guy like you. Wow. <laughs> let, let, let him free claim. No, I, I don't know. I think you guys are wrong on that. I don't, I don't think he would be a green arrow guy, but whatever. Anyways, half splash, uh, affordable only because of course it's towards the end of his career and uh, green arrow is, um, smaller, um, on this piece. But uh, there you go. Um, it's there. It's available. And maybe we can do a deal for it later in the uh, recap if you guys want to do that. Well, thank you, Karen. Okay. Now I'm being pulled off, I guess, by Karen. Uh, she says, Nick collects apparel. No, no. I know you're, you're not telling me off. But uh, yes, it's true that he collects apparel. I get that. I know that. But I just don't know that he would care about Green Arrow. Because he's a very kind of character guy as well. So um, he's an apparel stack. Stan, I love that. Okay, excellent. So let us, um, Alberto's not here tonight, um, which is okay, because I don't think I have any cap art. Or maybe I do, but I don't think so. Um, so thanks, everybody, for listening to that. And um, Are you doing something with your, um, I, uh, well, you're kind of breaking up now, so. Oh, am I, oh, oh, yeah. shit, I see it. I you're see it there, yeah. I, I suddenly see there at the top corner, I'm getting a notification that my connection is unstable. Damn it. What is it, like choppy? Am I choppy? Yeah, you're kind of getting buffered. So we can hear you fine, but the image is all like pixelated and sometimes freezes. Uh, 
Sorry, everyone. There's nothing I can do about that. I don't know why. I never used to have that problem. And only in the last month or so, I noticed it started happening for the first time. And it's kind of becoming a regular issue now. Arwen's but, watching too many videos. Yeah. Um, actually, thanks for letting me know. Arwen! <laughs> Are you online browsing? Are you online? Okay, can you, can you, do you mind getting off? Hello? Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I got a bad connection. It's not screwing up the uh, the stream. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's going to help. I don't know how much that was actually slowing it down anyways. But but you can hear audio okay? Yeah, audio is fine. I don't know what the slides are going to look like. Yeah, well, you'll let me know about okay. that. Okay, you'll let, me, you'll let me know when I put the next one up. Uh, how's the man when you get Oh, Nice. <laughs> thank you. And I am old. Uh, thank you. My, and my own wife is laughing at your joke on top of it, you know? Love it. <laughs> A2, Brute. Um, yeah, thank you. They got pills. They got, I don't need pills, believe me. Uh, what is protection? Uh, screen. Arwen messing with her dad. Yeah, I don't know. Jason, the Arwen. <laughs> <laughs> Jason did, ar did, did narc on her. Um, okay. So, excellent. Let us get to the next one, everyone. And... I'll jump back in here to the slides. Uh, the next piece is, next, is number 10. And for that, we go to this. Can you see it okay, Jason? Yeah, we can see it fine. Okay. So this is by number 10, everybody. It is $3,000. So this is um, one of the less than a handful of pieces that are uh, over a three-digit price. Um, it is the first appearance of the Sleeper Symbiote. Um, just for a point of reference, so this is the first issue that the Sleeper Symbiote appears in. Um, for point of reference, so this is page 15. Page 13, two pages earlier, you see how he forms. So you see how the Symbiote starts to attach itself to Eddie Brock. Okay, and that page sold for $1,500. So you get a couple of panels of Eddie Brock basically, you know, shirtless, naked or whatever. And the symbiote is, is starting to wrap itself and attach itself to him. Um, the very next page after that, which would be page 14, happens to be the birth page, which is a full page splash of Sleeper Symbiote, which was also ended up being used as a cover. And then this is the page following the splash. So it's the first panel page appearance of the sleeper symbiote. Um, yeah, so there you go. And as I say, um, that first one where he's forming, but you don't really see him in his actual sleeper form, uh, that one was 1500 So it gives you some kind of a, an idea as to where the pricing um, and valuation comes from. So there you go. Um, so we'll leave that there. And I guess we can move to the next one unless there's any comments I need to uh, do. No, uh, other than Jeffrey, first appearance, sick. There we go, excellent. Okay, let us go to the next one by 11. We go back to DC for by 11. And um, you know how, you know how uh, Marvel you often get, well, not that often, but they're really fun when you get these pages of like Spidey and Daredevil and there's a panel where they're showing him swinging across the city, and it's like multiple images of the character, either somersaulting or swinging or whatever. Right. You know? So I love Everybody loves those pages. So this is a page of DC, but it's Superman. And it's obviously Superman, so he's a flying character. You don't usually see those types of panels with flying characters, but this is one of those. I thought it was kind of fun. And that's why I bought it, because I'm a Superman fan, mm. um, and because it had one of those panels. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought, yeah, it'd be pretty fun to get. Uh, but again, in desperation mode, trying to you know offer things up to make it a, a, a sale, um, I figured, okay, whatever. I got to pick something out of my collection to, to offer. So that's why I'm putting it in here. So I'm, I'm okay if it doesn't sell. Um, but yeah, really fun. And just to show you guys, get you guys a better view. Cab of the... took it. I'm sorry? Cab just took it. Oh, okay. Well, let's make it official. Um, Cab took it. Okay, number 11 goes to Cab. Excellent. 
Thank you, Cab. I appreciate that. Uh, but let me just show you, since I was about to do that anyways, let me just show you um the the i want to do i want to get you guys a closer image of the top panel with all those images okay so tech check this out there you go you know, one two three four five six so six images in sequence it's really really a lot of fun and i love that the fact that there's like a, a bird flying around uh hanging like i don't know if it's a dove but i like to think it's a dove a nice sweet bird um so i thought that was really really a lot of fun so Cool, and I'm glad to see that at least. Yeah, again, that's the second time that it's a piece from my collection <laughs> that I'm hoping, those are the ones I hope don't sell. And of course, it's gone. So Mickey got one and Cap got one. Okay, I'm on a street now of some sort. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, quickly, okay, we just got some thank yous there. All right, excellent. So let me get into the next one. So. The next one, everyone, is buy number 12. And with that, we go to Marvel again. And that is a Tom Rainey Ink by Scott Hanna Black Widow page. An absolutely beautiful, stunning, stunning page with um, Black Widow in every single panel. Four out of four panels as she speaks to Yvonne, the Russian dude who is no longer human i don't I haven't read it so i don't know why he he basically has turned into like a not a robot but he's like metal um so i don't know exactly what happened to him but no longer human apparently and then he attacks natasha there at the bottom they start fighting on the next page um but i love rainy's work from this period really really nice especially like her hair how he does the hair and yeah i just love the wall the the, the black and white on the wall Mm -hmm. And the lighting effects that he did for this to pop the characters off the wall. Really, really beautiful, I think. And like I say, um, I don't know what CJ, why you're telling me to keep saying it. Uh, keep saying what? Uh, not sure. Not sure. Uh, lots of uh, OG. Lots of OG. Okay. I don't know. Nice ink. Yes, very nice ink. Um, so, so, yeah. So, there you go. The coloring. And no, exactly, right? And I don't want to get into it, but as you know, that's what always happens, you know? Yeah. Like, that's why we always complain about coloring, because it always loses so much of the artwork, you know? Mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is a shame. So Mickey says, nice page, like Rain's art too. Yeah, exactly. He's very underappreciated, absolutely. Um, Seagull and Schuster page. Nice, I love that, Rick. That's a really a good one. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> Um, that you don't want to sell. No, no, no. This one I want to sell. I want to sell. But of course, since it's not from my collection, of course, nobody's buying it. And this is what's going to happen tonight. Okay, it is what it is. Excellent. So let us move on, everyone. Buy. That is buy 12. And we will now go to buy 13. And for buy 13, we have a fantastic artist who I only recently became familiar with and has a lovely style, which I really, really like. So let's check this out. This is by 13. And it's actually two pages side by side. So you know. Here we go. So by 13, this is $800. Just FYI, so everybody knows. Um, this is essentially cost. Okay, so this is uh, um, John Tim's pages basically sell um, in this range. 300, 300, 350, 400. 450 in that range. So um, this is basically cost. Um, a beautiful, beautiful style. You know, as soon as I looked at this, it reminded me of, God, I gotta be honest, it reminds me of many of today's contemporary artists. Um, the, the, the usage of, of dry brush, the, the, the usage of um, uh, the, the wash, um, but really, really beautiful images. I especially love the fact that it appears um, because they're they're at the uh, the boardwalk in the left hand side page, and Mister Freeze freezes the water coming into the towards the shore, and when you go to the next page, you see Killer Croc is lifting. I don't know what you call that, but I again I guess being that that's the boardwalk, they're, they're probably what like a Coney Island maybe. Yeah, I would or think something. so. Yeah, I would think so, right? Because that's the Joker right there, fellas. Everybody, check this out. You'll see with the color, 
that's that's like one of those uh, signs that you see above or beside uh, a ride at the amusement park. Um, and of course, that's the Joker's face right there uh, on the torn up sign that he's lifting up and he's about to uh, crush Mr. Freeze with. Um, so really, really, really lovely. I, I love this guy's art. Are you uh, very familiar with uh, John Tim's, uh, his work, Jason? Just a little bit. Just a, um, yeah. I've seen him at, a, he's come to C2E2 a few times. And oh. I've looked through his portfolios there. And uh, and uh, I like, even though I'm mostly a Marvel guy, I, I like uh, Mr. Freeze. So this is kind of cool. Okay. okay. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, really, really like it. And Michael Cross, uh, good evening. Welcome, Michael. Uh, Michael says, Tim, um, Tim's does a fanta uh, fantastic stuff. Check out the MJ Gwen Black Cat Commission that he did for me on Cap. Yeah, go to, uh, well, Michael, is your Cap under the name Michael Cross? We can look, we can find it under C, letter C for Cross. Let us know and check that out if that's the case, everyone. Yeah, very, very cool. It is indeed, Jeffrey. There you go. Yeah. Uh, howdy, howdy, my friend. Howdy. Um, yeah. So very, very cool. That will be there um, later in the weekend along with... There you go. So there you go, everybody. Yeah. Go check out the commission that he that he did. I'll check it out after the show, Michael. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay. All right. Let me come back to you. All right, everyone. Let me go to buy 14. That's the next one in tonight's show, uh, show and sell. And for this, we have a, a very affordable uh, Greg Land piece. And this is original art of Gareth, the male lead, um, who was the, I guess, co-lead next to Arwen, who was the, the, the female lead from the book Sojourn, which was CrossGen Comics' best-selling title back in the day. And um, this is from a series, a, a large series of bookmarks. They were producing so many different <laughs> types of products, promotional uh, uh, items to, yeah. um, to promote their work back in the day. And uh, bookmarks was one of them, which was really fun. So, uh, you know, you can, you can get their bookmarks and then I guess use them when you read their, their titles, you know, their, yeah. all the, the books they were producing. Um, so practically they had, they had, they had bookmark art, uh, done for every pretty much every single book and for some books multiple bookmarks um, So yeah, so it's pretty fun So there you go. This is on a standard piece of uh, just in case anybody's curious um, uh, 11 by 17 uh, Bristle board. It's just that of course because it's for a bookmark. That's why it's um, held to a long vertical single panel mm -hmm. There you go so let me come back to you. And again, that's by 14. And what's a bookmark? Yeah. Um, a little bit of apologies for purchasing art from your collection. <laughs> never, never apologize. I'm kidding. However, that testify to your wonderful taste. And I appreciate it. You're very nice. You're always so nice. You're too nice. Never <clears throat> apologize. Listen, it's my fault. If I, I'm the one that's deciding that I'm going to put things from my collection into the, the, the sale to try to, you know, boost the amount of pieces I have available, whatever. I know the risks. Those are the risks, right? So whatever. Um, I, I'm glad it's going to you anyways. That's so why I appreciate it. So thank you, though. Um, oops, sorry. So thank you, and we will go on to the next piece, everyone. So that was by 14, the Greg Land piece was, and now we go to by 15. And for that, we go to Marvel, and that will be... A four illustration by Declan Shalvey, a very popular modern uh, uh, contemporary artist. As you see there, this one is done on eight and a quarter by 11 and three quarters uh, paper. And uh, it, it's, but it's, it's, uh, it's commission quality. It's not, it's not um, convention sketch quality. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, fully penciled, fully inked with good quality India ink. Um, as well as washes. Um, there you go. Really good. I'm sorry. That looks really good. Yeah, no, it's 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 very very nice, very very nice. Uh, thank you again for uh, getting the lights up, rallying the lights. Really really appreciate you. Thanks so much, Nick. And uh, yes, I know it's going to a great home. Thank you. 
And uh, yes, Declan, hot on Thundercats. Yes, go ahead and plug your book, man. Plug your book. Thundercats, a super high selling first issue. Awesome. Happy to hear that, Nick. Very good for the publishing industry overall. So, um, so yeah, so there you go, everyone. Um, that is buy 15. And if you uh, want it, you got to just put buy 15 in the uh, comment uh, field. Um, so talk about it with me later when we get to the end of the show and we do a recap if you want. Unless people say no, they don't want to recap, then we may not do it. Um, oh, and FYI, I guess I should have also uh, mentioned. I forgot to mention this. Sorry, I'm mentioning it now. But we're at our all-time high for viewers. Except it's so weird how it happens. In one second, as soon as I said that, four people felt dropped off. Four people, as soon as I said all time high for viewers, boom, four of them dropped off. It's because you're clear again. You went back to clear. Yeah, so weird. <clears throat> um, but I just wanted to mention that anything that, that doesn't sell tonight, um, in the very near future, I will just be adding to uh, my uh, website. Um, perhaps not some of the pieces in my collection, but most of the stuff. So, yeah, so not all, but I think, you know, most of the stuff uh, that will be seen tonight will eventually make it to my website. And anyways, if you're on my mailing list, uh, you'll you'll know because um, I'll send out an email about it. Okay, let us move uh, on. Uh, this time we will jump over back to the world of DC Comics. And for this, we have a very lovely double page, what I call splash spread, because it's one of those where... Half of it is a double page splash, and the other half is double page spread. So it's one half of one image across both pages. The other half is multiple images, panels crossing across. So um, and that is from Ion number three from 18 years ago. Uh, this is page six and seven, double page uh, splash, uh, spread splash, however you want to call it. Uh, it's $400, and this is by the great Greg Tokini, um, Italian artist in Italy, and inked by Jay Leaston, famous for, most mostly famous for inking Greg Land for many, many years. And uh, interesting thing about this piece, everybody, for those who need to know, that is Green Lantern in sort of a utopia and the woman is his former girlfriend alex who has since died so alex died um i haven't read the issue i haven't read this this era of, of uh, the series ion so um I'm, I'm thinking that he's kind of just in a sort of a dream world type of thing going on here that's that's what it's going on but let me show you again um in color what it looks like yeah, so that's his uh, former girlfriend, Alex, who uh, passed away. Um, and yeah, there you go. Double page spread or splash, if you will, as you can see why I call it splash, splash, spread splash or splash spread. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern. There you go. And that is by number 60. So make a note of that if that's something you might be interested in. And Jeff, we see, say, spread, spread and splash. Sounds like something I'd find at OAXXX. Nice. <laughs> oh, a double page spread. Well, no. When it's all panels, that's a true double page spread. When it's half and a half, the only sort of way to really say what it is accurately is to say spread splash or splash spread. And I would go with whatever is on top first. The top is a splash, is double page spread, so splash, so... I, I typically will say double page splash spread for something like this, even though I didn't write it on the slide. But I was just wondering, would you call, what would you call those? Yeah, for splash spread. You see? Now you know, Margaret. Now you know. A splash. Yeah, let's not go with that. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. I didn't want to get into that. It's kind of like gruesome. The fridged girlfriend. Look it up, everybody, if uh, you want to know what he's talking about. The top generates all the power. Indeed. Um, that's a hot take. All right, so let me <clears throat> jump back in. Um, hey, you can feel free to agree. I just like I feel free to disagree with that one. Like I said, because we already have double pages where 
They have shared panels that cross, right? Where a part of at least one panel is on both sides, right? And when you have that and it's panels going across, those are legit double page spreads. But when it literally has half of it as one image, which is the equivalent of one of those, you know, splash on one side and panels on the other, yeah, it's both a splash and a spread. So that's why I say splash spread or spread splash. But whatever, call it what you want. What can I say? Hey, another Chicago man. What's up, Tom Kadzalowski? Don't ever apologize. Don't worry. Good to see you. Lovely to have you. And thank you for uh, chiming in when you could. I appreciate that, man. 60% um, splash, Marcus, is... Um, you see, exactly, Mar Margaret, you're seeing my point. Exactly. 60% splash is when it's one page and one of the panels takes up approximately 60% of the one page. See? And there you go. And <laughs> you are so right, my friend. We can definitely dedicate a whole show to this. And we probably should one day. So funny. Okay, let us uh, continue. Um, it may only make sense for Canadians. It may. It's a it metric may. splash. It's right. A it's a metric. Yeah. We measure yeah. it in, in metric standards by metric right. standards. Exactly. It might just be you and me, Margaret. It might be you and me alone on top of the mountain. What can I say? But at least we're on top of the mountain. Yeah, <laughs> baby. All right. And uh, she's of age. I'm not corrupting her. She's a full grown adult. All right. There we go. Okay. And because she's a Canuck, she stands by me. You see? You see? You see, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody. Jump back in. Um, get to the next piece. And that next piece is number 17. We jump to Marvel again. Going back and forth throughout the show. And for Marvel, we have... What do we have? Okay, yes, for $250, it is a – see, see, <laughs> this is – Headless this is, Mar Marcus, this is what I could call a 60% splash, you know, but also with an inset panel. But either way, I didn't want to argue with anybody, so I didn't <clears> write <throat> any words such as splash, half splash, anything like that. I figured I'll just go with, you know, whatever, let it, let it be as a panel page with a large splash on it. Uh, so it's by Steve Crespo and ink by Scott Hanna from Cable 41 from 1997. Another one that blows my mind, like that these pages go all the way back to 97. Like, holy crap, man. It's already a full generation, Jason. Yeah, that's ridiculous. God, we're old. Holy crap. Yeah, so there you go. You got Cable and he's getting wasted by somebody. And uh, Bishop there in the bottom three panels with a really cool headshot in the last panel. And a full figured image. In both the second to last and, and and third to last panels, so lots of fun there. If you are a um, <laughs> cable oh, fan, Margaret. did you see what that's Margaret not? Wrote? That is not a splash, <laughs> not a splash. And yes, he's making you laugh. That's good for your first visit here, Margaret. I I'm, I'm happy you're enjoying yourself. That's what's important. The page is older than you. That's what's so awesome about it. That is so crazy, man. So it so makes crazy. You feel old. Making making us feel even older now. Thanks, Margaret. Yeah. Uh, Scrack is right. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So by 17, we move on from there. We'll come back to you. Okay, so the next piece, again, I wasn't going to show this. I, I made the, I made the, um, I had made the slide. And those of you who watch most of my, my sales shows, you might remember that I once offered up a complete issue, um, Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman number one. And it was a just one of the greatest content quality issues I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so meaning the content quality of every page is just fabulous. What you get on every page, not only Wonder Woman all over the place, but tons of villains, a Batman's rogues gallery uh, throughout the issue, um, including Harley Quinn, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze, Joker, Two-Face, uh, Penguin, just on and on and on. Um, and so I just couldn't bear to break up the issue. 
Um, but I did mention that I may break it up at some point down the road. And I also had to cover that issue, the cover which I offered also on a show. And ultimately, it didn't sell on the show, but I then sold it when I put it on my website. Um, so the cover is now gone. I still have the complete issue. And so I thought, you know what? I, I very recently, like as in this week, decided I would break up the issue and put it on my website. So that's what made me think, ah, maybe I, I since I'm going to drop the issue on my website, there's no point for me to just show one, one page tonight. But because I had the slide made, I figured, oh, whatever, I might as well just show it anyways. And okay, if it sells, it sells. And if it doesn't, I'll still be able to put it up with all the other pages as a complete. Sorry. It'll be the full issue. Looking to break it up. Um, and that'll be soon. Don't know when, though, but it'll be soon. I'll send an email out to the uh, mailing list uh, when it happens. But anyways, here we go. I will show you the, the one page I'm showing tonight. Uh, it's one of the more pricier pages that will be in this issue. On my website, if it doesn't sell tonight, on my website, it'll probably be over a 1000 bucks. Um, I wanted to keep it as a three-figure price, so I kept it just under. So let's take a look at this one. So this one will be by 18. So I'm I, 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 putting this one at 975 for tonight. And it is by Ethan Van Skyver. Um, He of the very Brian Bolland-esque um, style of the, uh, stylizations of line art. And as I say, it's from Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman, number one from 2014. So this one also is kicking my ass. I'm, it, to me, it feels like it was four or five years ago, and it's already a decade. So um, it kills me. But again, one of the be better pages in the book. And that's really hard to say because, as I said, it's a spectacular book. Like like every almost every single page has just a, a phenomenal imagery, whether Cap it's Wonder Woman or other characters or both. Um, I've grabbed yeah. it. <clears throat> Sorry? Cab grabbed it. Oh. Oh, okay. So well, once again, Jason, you you didn't want to you you're too nice to interrupt me. <laughs> All right. You're you're too, you know, I like you so much. You know, Jason. I was I, close. I, I, I was close. I, I was I, waiting. I, I can't I can't get mad at you. You know. Yeah. Um so okay. So by 18, let me write that down for posterity. And you picked a fan. Fabulous page, Cab. So I'm happy it's going to you. And here we go. So 975. There we go. And um, so it's official. Um, by 18 goes to you. Beautiful, beautiful page. And let me jump here into the chat. Breaking up is hard to do. It really is, Rick. For me, it is. It, it's always been. I'm a purist, you know, so at, at heart. So it's very, very difficult. You know, the other dealers, you know, the, the full-time dealers, they don't seem to ever have a problem breaking up, you know, stuff that's been together for a number of years. But it's always tough for me. So um, mm -hmm. one woman is angry. She is. Congrats. Nice. Cab the Snatcher. Um, it is. It is. Ethan. Cap. Ethan? I don't. Oh, Ethan. <laughs> Ethan Van Skyber. Okay. Cab Grabber. Cab on a roll. You'll love to see it. Look at all pages will sell if you say, I don't want to <laughs> No, no. I'm being honest here. I'm always honest, CJ. You know that. This one, this one was not technically part of my collection. It was so-and-so. It was like one of those things that I bought because I thought, okay, I can't afford to, to tie up the money to buy this, an, an entire issue plus the cover, and keep it for my collection. I couldn't afford it. But here we are, you know, many, many years later, and you can say it kind of by default, it did end up being part of my collection because I just couldn't bear to break it up. Um, I just want, and I, I didn't want to let go because I, I I was scared somebody else would break it up and, you know, whatever. All these years later, finally, I'm like, okay, the pages are too amazing to not keep it. I mean, to, 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 to not break it up. I just want yeah, I just think that there's such great quantity of quality in these 20 pages that I just felt like, yeah, I, I want other people to grab pages. So um, so there you go. So thank you, and um, I appreciate that, Cab. Thank you so much. Um, why are EVS women so angry looking? You'll have to ask him. Um, I've been wanting some giant size man thing art lately. Nice. Is that giant <laughs> man thing in your collection, or are you just happy to see me? Nice, nice. You guys are... Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right. All right. Let us come back here. 
I got the, um, okay, I got that down. So the next number, we'll move on. The next number is uh, number 19, the best number of the evening, always the best number in the numerical system. Number 19, we go to Marvel again. And for that, we have another Mike Perkins piece. Look at that. And I actually, once again, I'm not kidding. So this one, I will admit, this one is from my collection. I have a lot of art from the Iron Fist series that he worked on because I love his work and I love Iron Fist so much. So, I, I again, I needed stuff, you know, to pad out the, the, the offerings with. So, again, I'm digging through my collection. And despite the fact that I own as much art as I do from this series, Jason, I literally spent, I would say, an hour looking through it all just to finally pick a page <laughs> that I was willing really? to part with. Yeah. yeah. I hate, I just, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I just, I hate it. I hate parting with my, my Mike Perkins collection. Um, even though I have a lot of it, I'm just like, oh. Yeah. But um, yeah, whatever. So okay. the, the, fun, the crazy thing about it is in my, in my mind, I keep telling myself, I have so much of it. I should let some of it go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure. I do feel I do feel a certain measure of guilt and greed <clears throat> over over you know over owning so much of it. But uh, <laughs> what can I say? When you love what you love, you you, yeah, you keep right. collecting it, right? So yeah, absolutely. So that's it. And oh, sorry, sorry, wrong one. Everybody, um, yeah. So uh, so there you go. So, uh, Three seventy five. Um, hopefully, I can put this back into my collection, and it looks like I can. So I'm gonna move on. And here we go. Hearts asking me for more Superman pages. Whoa, did you draw all these yourself? What do you mean? He is such a pencil, uh, such a great one, I guess you meant. Uh, pencil ink artist. Uh, with wonderful series, but even wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And Cab knows. He, he picked up some artwork from it for sure. It's a five-way splash. Nice. You'll guilt all the time over hoarding original art. It passes, though. <laughs> Know what you mean? I have many pages in that series as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I just said. Exactly. But uh, it is what you 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 just you just keep buying. You know, you just keep buying. So you yeah, like yeah. it. You, you you buy what you love, and yeah. you just keep buying it. You know. Yeah. So okay. So excellent. I have a chance to put that and keep it in my collection. So that's good. Um, let us move on. I don't know till the recap. I know. I know. But I'm hoping. Since since I have only done a recap once before, and people are not really used to that on my channel, I'm hoping people, you know, since they don't usually see recap, hopefully people will think like, yeah, whatever, okay, it's good, you know, we've seen it, now. you right. know, and then we can we can move on, and then we don't have to recap. Um, okay, so let us move to number twenty. Um, earlier, I showed you the Greg Land piece for the book. Oh, geez, sorry, the bookmark art from Prosgen. So I'm going to show another one here, and that is by Steve Epting, and this is of um, Capricia from Crux. She is the um, main character from the science fiction adventure Crux series from the late and very, very lamented um, uh, CrossGen comics. And um, uh, nice. uh, sorry, Jason. Uh, that's nice. That's a nice piece. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Um, as you guys see, the I always put for the for the bookmark art, I always put 2001 to 2003 because I don't know for absolute certainty what what year they were all drawn. I don't remember. It's been so long, and none of them seem to be dated. Yeah, so I just know that I could narrow it down to between 2001 and 2003. And so there you go. That's uh, <laughs> that's as close I, as I can get. Bye, Capricia. <laughs> Buy what you love and just keep buying. I hear that. You know that, Mikey. Mikey Boy's here. Yeah. Hey, Mike, uh, there's a piece that, I don't know, for some reason, I, I figure nobody will care about it. But every time I look at it, I think of you. It, 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 I look at it and I think that's the kind of piece that only Mike Delery would would, would, would would want, I think. So I'm glad you're here and you'll, 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 you'll tell me what you think when we see it, when we get to it. I think it's uh, 10 away from here at number 30. And uh, so bought too much from Heritage recently. Wife got kind of pissed, was like, why are there so many payments to Heritage this month? Nice. Hey, man, you do what you got to do, you know? I always say, you know, buy it now, worry about it later. <laughs> Apparently, that's what you've been doing. 
Um, so this can also function as an actual bookmark if you cut it out. <laughs> exactly. Ouch. Exactly. I wouldn't recommend it, but, you know, need to laminate. Yeah. Also, what's a bookmark? Yeah. What are books? So we should do an episode on married collector stories. You know, the first round table I ever did was with my friend Jeff Singh. And it was so cool because it was during the heart of COVID. But I managed to go to his house and we did it side by side at his house. So that was really fun. You and have an offer, Ruben. Oh, I'll be I'll, I'll get to it in a second. We covered a ton of um a ton of um uh topics in that episode. And um Sorry, it wasn't the first round table. It was the first hangout episode. And we covered like a ton of different topics because we one of the only episodes where we actually planned it out ahead of time. And one of the things that we talked about, uh, Tom, was wives, the wives in the hobby. So you might want to check that one out. It's the first episode of uh, Hangout, Comic Art Hangout. So you can see in the, in the Comic Art Hangout playlist if you check that out. And so thank you for letting me know, Jason. And buy 19 for three and a quarter. <clears throat> and so because of that, let me leave buy 20s. And we can end with buy 20 anyway, since I don't think anybody has uh, bought it. So let me first, hold on. Let me do this. Okay. Let me come back to you. And then, oh, not the one, <laughs> the one I just showed from my collection. Oh, <laughs> You see, the beautiful thing about the fact that it's an offer, not a, not a claim, is that I can say no. Right. Yep. Right. <laughs> so now it's the difficulty. This is where it gets really difficult because on one hand, I don't really want to sell it. And on the other hand, I really love making part of the, the biggest thing for me of when I became a dealer back in the old days, you know, a full-time art dealer, mm -hmm. what I really loved was that I always bought and sold and traded art that I would keep in my collection, right? If, if I yes. could afford to keep it all, you know? And so it all, it all, it was always nice to sell things and trade things to people because I knew that they were taking things that I enjoyed myself, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so making people happy by helping them put things in their collection it yeah. makes me happy, you know? Right. It's always fun. <clears throat> but that makes it hard when it's something from your collection, you know? So, but um, no, look, I don't want to let it go. But like I said, because I do have a lot from the series, yes. And because you're being fair, yes, Jason. And I like you also, Jason. So, yes, I will. I, I was going to say happily. I'm not going to say happily. I'll just say yes. I will accept your offer. Jason. Um, yes, that is yours. And let me let me make it official here, okay? Like we always do. So I'll pop it up as 19. And um, let me get your offer up here officially. So 325. And yes, I am officially saying that yes, I will accept your offer and I will get that down. So we will put you down as SCG. And I'll mark you down at 325. That was offered and accepted. Perfect. Okay. So let's do that. And what else? What else? Am I missing anything of importance? <clears throat> I don't think so. I just see uh, shipping is not free. No, shipping is not free. Um, shipping, just so you know. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought I was on the screen again. Sorry. Um, I will always reiterate that shipping to the United States of America is only, and yes, I emphasize only, $27 right now for regular sized art. And I say only because for the exact same piece of art for you to ship it back to me is roughly $45. So way cheaper going your way southbound than it is coming northbound to me. <laughs> All right. So 27 bucks. So, you know, uh, other countries um, overseas, basically any other country, it's like 65. Okay. Um, so there you go. Um, okay, so let us uh, here, hold on. Man, imagine not having to pay PayPal's international fees. I love Canadian sellers. 
actually, you probably wouldn't love Canadian sellers because I forgot to mention one thing, Margaret. For you and any other Canadian, it's very different when you buy from me. Depending on whether the art is in my collection or in my dealer inventory, um, or if, it, if it's something I'm selling on behalf of somebody, let me put it this way. If it's from my dealer inventory officially, you would also, as a Canadian, have to pay the Ontario 13% HST, um, which is really sucky. But because I got to pay the tax to import it into Canada, that's why. Um, but uh, for, you know, when it's in my personal collection, then you wouldn't have to, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, um, as I say, <laughs> I'm not, it's not a betrayal. It's just, it's just not wanting to go to jail or pay hefty fines to the government and being on their black flag list or whatever. That's all, that's, that's all it's about. You know, um, I, I can't, I can't do that to the government. Um, but like I said, like I said, uh, hopefully if I can ever bring any Legion art, I will see if I can bring it not from the inventory, make it either from my collection or from somebody else who consigns it to me. Okay. And so you don't have to pay taxes. There you go. Um, okay. So uh, anything else? Also, Canadian double page splashes are 40% not splash. Math works out. Nice. Nice. Uh, so good. Exactly. Taxes explains the free healthcare. Exactly. There's a lot, nothing's ever free in life, is it? Uh, okay. So let us go from there, everyone, to the next piece. And um, the next piece, where are we here? Okay. The next piece is going to be buy number 21. And uh, buy 21, we go back to DC. Okay. So let me tell you. So this is a commission by Mahmoud Asrar. And before I show it to you, I just want you to know so you understand the, the, what's happening with the price here. I checked a couple of months ago, as of a couple of months ago, to commission him to get this exact thing. So uh, any commission of any character in this style, this size, uh, as of two months ago was $600. And um, my price is less simply because it's not one of the big, big top tier characters. But it's a beautiful, beautiful... The physique he put on her is just stunningly gorgeous. Muscular, it's still sexy. Love it. So let's check it out. So Please. it is Big Barda, and it is an 11 by 14 Copics marker illustration um, with some white highlights. Um, absolutely beautiful. I love Mahmoud's artwork mm -hmm. in general. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, if, if I was a commission collector, I would keep this one. I love her physique. I mean, and I love the posture, the pose, everything. I just think it's absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, it's very well done. Yeah, and 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 yeah, man. So, three seventy five. Like I said, I'm doing that simply because you know it's it's not you know Spidey or Wonder Woman or whoever. But yes, it's uh, as of two months ago, six hundred dollars. If you want to commission something in this exact size and style. Uh, directly from Mahmoud. And uh, Margaret says, Asra has done a bunch of gorgeous Legion commissions. Oh, well, I, I love his stuff, so I'm not surprised that they would be gorgeous. Everything he does is quite lovely, you know? So, Margaret, got one province over from him. Exactly. Uh, exactly, CJ. We're, we're, we're practically neighbors. <laughs> and look at you, CJ. It, it, it does kind of have that feel. Because of the Copics, he was like the first guy to use Copics uh, in this industry, pretty much. Um, and it's got that kind of feel to it, right? The good girl art. It's really, really gorgeous. Thank you, Carlos. It, it is. It's definitely a good price. Uh, Copic Cetic. It's sick. A lot of thicknesses here. Uh, beautiful sicknesses. Really cool piece. Margaret says, I think that's a fair price. And it's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Mahmoud is awesome, underrated for sure. Hey, what's up, JC? Good to see you, man. Uh, not cool. Sick. <laughs> Tom King series made me a big fan of Barda. Awesome. Wow. I can't believe you actually read DC, man. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, the white highlights. 
Um, so there you go. Okay, cool. Let us move on, everyone. I don't want to belabor the point. So this next piece, Tony, NYC. I don't know if you're still here. This might or might not be something up your alley. Um, I hope it is. Let's check this out. Back to Marvel, everyone. This is by 22. It is actually this here. <laughs> this talking about definitions, everyone. This is what you would call, if you want to be absolutely correct and specific, it is a splash page with two inset panels. Um, it is uh, $800. It is by Andy Tong and Chris Justice from Spectacular Spider-Man UK number 200, the anniversary issue. It is the page one credits and title splash from, wow, already 2010. Uh, going back 14 years already. Holy crap. Half a generation. Um, so really, really beautiful images of both Spider-Man in all three panels, I may add, and Venom with a killer, killer upside down hanging off the um, ceiling image yeah. of Venom. So really, really love this one. Um, so I don't know if Tony, if it's not up your alley, I, th I think usually it's the kind of thing you love. Or maybe you're not here. I don't know. Um, but I figured you might be into this one. And let's see what are some comments. I see a bunch of comments, so I, I don't want to skip over too many of them. So proud of you. Uh, everyone comes around eventually. Exactly. I, I echo those sentiments, Margaret. It's a splash. No, no. But it's a splash with two inset panels. Not a true splash. I have been here cooking the whole time. Wow. Nice to see you, Ian. Very cool top panel. It certainly is. This is a UK splash. It is technically a splash. Well, yes, but but to be even more specific, it is it is a splash with two inset panels. That's how you get super specific about it. Um, not half splash, even though I know why you see it that way, Dan. Mm -hmm. But if, if, you, if you look at the top image, it continues down around the sides of the two inset panels. You see, so it's like the way it's designed, it's like an entire splash, but they laid two extra panels on top of the bottom image, which was the splash image, which is why it's still technically a splash, but with two inset panels. Um, but yes, when the when the inset panels cover almost half of the page, then mm -hmm. yes, I also wouldn't get upset if somebody said half splash. So a lot of technicalities and with the jargon and this kind of stuff, you know um but yeah glad that uh you're you're chiming in there with that dan uh, title splash even yes yeah, so i need some cheeseburgers i've read lots of dc stuff really depends on the writers okay cool cool good to know look at the bottom right foot exactly you can see it there it's a ripple uh, okay all right so let us move on everyone that will be there later for now let us go back to, I believe, probably DC. Um, and this will be another splash page with one inset panel. Let's do that again. Why don't we? And for that, we have a piece by Howard Porter and John Livesey from DC Universe Online Legends. It is from number 14, page 16, uh, splash again with an inset panel. And I believe in the inset panel, don't quote me, but I, I believe that's the Atom. And you get the entire Justice League, and that is Lois Lane right there. Not on fire, but on some kind of, in, in, it's, it's like she's in, in, on, on, on electric fire. I don't know what's happening to her. She doesn't even know what's happening to her. And neither does Superman and the rest of the Justice League. You got a full-figured Superman there, nice and large, along with Bats and Flash. Mr. Terrific and the Golden Age Green Lantern and Green Lantern in the back as well. So really, really cool. And because it's DC and not Marvel, it's a very affordable for a splash with such a large Superman on it. And Pad Bear says, well, I wasn't expecting to see UK Spider-Man. Just picked up my first page from this series recently. Cool. Thanks for letting us know, Pad Bear. And you put your right foot in... And 90% for Marcus. It's a 90% splash. And it doesn't reach all the way to the bottom. Excellent. I agree. 
Uh, we first we had Superman Blue, then Lois Blue. Exactly. First appearance of Lois Blue. Where are the speculators when you need them, right? Um, it would get disqualified on a throwdown Thursday. It probably would. I don't know who makes up those rules. Um, okay, so good enough. That's enough time for anybody who wanted that to grab it. So that's page 23. No power on the bottom. <laughs> that, that is uh, by 23, everybody. Let me come back to you. And from there, let us keep going. Let's move on to number 24. And so by 24 is back to Marvel, and that is... Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> Bill uh, Bilson Kevich is a vintage Bilson Kevich illustration um, colored by Steve Olaf. Now, as you see at the bottom, I wrote it the date as early to mid 80s, and that's based upon not only the style but also because of Sinkevich's signature. Um, it is dated, but it's dated only by Steve Olaf. Um, but in those days, Oftentimes, collectors would take um, illustrations that they already had for years and bring them to conventions to get Steve to color them. Hmm. So it may have been illustrated in 1987 as well as colored, um, but it's possible that it was illustrated first years earlier and then colored later. So I'm not sure, but based on the style and signature uh, that Bill has here, um, I think it looks more like early to mid 80s vintage art um and then colored 87. it's a but, cool uh, piece yeah it's the x-men dazzler allison blair herself you know so margaret wow margaret you're getting excited and it's not legion related bye gap is that joke ever gonna die though uh <laughs> very cool swift page what's up with the swift thing um taylor yeah oh, okay she's a singer so i guess you're talking about taylor well, she's uh, rumored to be going to be casted as Dazzler in an upcoming movie. Oh, is she? Yeah. Wow, I didn't I hear about that. True or just rumor, but... Oh, okay. And yeah, Rick, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why I didn't really want to specify like a year like that, but yes, exactly. It was very common around that 82, 83 um, time, time frame. Uh, before Birth of Swift, now everybody's getting in on it. Hey, it's that girl from the Super Bowl. I guess everybody knows these that what's happening in the movies except for me, you know? Uh, no, no, but it's beautiful art. Don't discriminate. Excellent. I love that. I love that. It's great to broaden your horizons, right? So that's cool. Um, awesome, says number one Marvel fan. Only thing, wish the hair was right, but yeah, beautiful piece. There you go. And all the 587, so around then is a safe bet. Um, yeah, but not necessarily, but still, whatever. You know, everybody has to sort of... You know, you if you if you make a deal for it, you know, you buy it based on whatever you feel might be the date. I just want to get as much information on it as possible, so you have something to work with. You know, and that's it. Okay, so let us move to the next one. The next one is buy number twenty-five, and for that we go back to the non-Marvel DC and another um, bookmark from CrossGen. Um, I've offered in the past, uh, when, back when I was doing those uh, Andrew Hennessy claim sales, I offered some sigil double page uh, splashes and that were really, really cool. And I mentioned at the time there was a page I offered that had a beautiful image of Roya, just like good girl art, like, like Adam Hughes quality. And I made it a point to say nobody ever has ever known Scott Eaton, that's who this artist is, as a good girl artist, but boy, he can draw with the best of them. So let's check this one out. Um, unfortunately, the art on the bookmark is not an example of his GGA work. The <laughs> colored version uh, is. So let's take a look. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, but I just wanted to show that, yeah, who the character, what she looked like in, in the series. Um, and uh, yeah, he he just he had a, he had a phenomenal ability to do cheesecake type art. Um, yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. And she's basically the the again the main lead of the uh, science fiction sigil series from CrossGen. Um, most of the uh, series, which was drawn by Scott Eaton uh, and uh, Andrew Hennessy. So there you go, another bookmark for you, 150 bucks. Yes, what is? Don't you don't have to say it. What is a bookmark? What are books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. Ha ha ha. 
Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, do I do trades? I don't know. You contact me after the show and uh, tell me what you're offering me. Uh, I, I, I've traded before, so let me know. Uh, the bookmark collector. Uh, the heck with corner box art. Bookmarks are in. Yeah. How much for the one on the right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wish I had that page, but then I wouldn't be selling it. Glad I don't collect bookmarks. Nice. Uh, okay. So let us just... <laughs> yeah, see, everybody wants the right side, of course. <laughs> it's free. Just take it in, Marcus. Take it all in, in all its glory right now, while it's there in front of you. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> let me come back. And okay, so this next page, this is by 26. I'll show you two. I'll show I'll be showing you two. Um, oh, hold on. Hold on. Mickey says, what size is the art? Uh, they're drawn on standard 11 by 17 bristle boards, Mickey. So let me show that to you again, real quick. So you're looking at right there. You're looking at the whole board. So basically, you know, the art goes from top to bottom, typically as, you know, at the top of the top panel would be. So it's probably at least 14 inches, 14 to 15, 14 to 15 inches tall, I guess you would say. Yeah. It's like pretty standard. And it's on a standard cross-gen board as well. So, um, and right side of the art. What about it? You're infatuated with it. She's a babe, babelicious. I get it. I know. I know. Okay. So that was saying, let us go to number, what did I say, 26? Yeah, 26. And for this, we're going back to DC. And I will show you. Mickey's taking 25. <clears throat> I'm sorry? Mickey's taking 25. Oh, let me go back to 25. And oh, there we go. So we make it official. Excellent. So by 25, this one. Let me put that down. I get you down for the 150, Mickey. There we go. Excellent. Thanks, Mickey. I appreciate it. <coughs> claim. Congrats. Awesome. There we go. Okay. Excellent. All right. And Mickey picked up the very first piece of the evening and the, the very first piece I showed, that Supergirl that he took from my collection. That was a nice um, So that's cool because now, now he also gets to have not only affordable shipping from Canada, but also more affordable because you spread the $27 between the two pieces. So <laughs> each piece only gets $13.50 added to it, to its total cost. So Deal. Just, Smart way to buy, right? That's why I always love to try to buy multiple pieces if I can, whenever I can, you know? All right, so number 26, everyone. I love this page. This is part of my collection. I, I can't see people selling, because I've tried selling this character before, and nobody seems to grab it. Um, but the pencil and inking is so fabulous. I love it. So I, I, I kind of wanted to include this just to, so I could show it to people. Um, so yeah, so this is number 26. Let's take a look. So this is 375, um, and this you could call a, a hat splash if you want to um, with a bunch of inset panels. It is by Joe Bennett, um, I guess most, most famous probably for the Hulk series from a few years ago, um, inked by, beautifully by the way, my, may I say, Bellardino Bravo, just stunning, stunning inks. Um, That's so nice. And yeah, and it's from Robin 175, as you see there, already 16 years ago, Robin 175 from 2008. And let me just show you, just so you get a better view. And it's still, it's still not super sharp, but let me get a, a better view of the that middle, the larger panel. It's got Robin and Spoiler together on it. Just so you see the type of inking he does, nice and slick. Um, yeah, it's just, just beautiful. Uh, I, I love the characters and I, I love the lighting technique, the inking in, in general. It's just phenomenal. Um, and that's why, that's why I bought it. I just, I was like, okay, Robin. And I love this costume and together with spoiler. Plus I love the fact that when you get, when you're buying something primarily for like a large panel, I love, I love when the other inset panels 
still also have images with those same characters. Mm -hmm. It was jam packed, you know. So it's it's content quality wise, it's like a a plus, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. So I, really, I really really love that. Um, let's see. As you claim more pages, the shipping cost per page approaches zero. This is the free shipping hack. Nice, thick deal. Splash with five insects like a wedding ring. Nice. All splash pages tonight. Wow. No, they're not. Even the bookmarks are one third splash. Spoiler alert. I like that one, Rick. Robin needs a bookmark. Yeah, I think I might keep a Robin bookmark, though. Uh, truly nice things. They, they really are. They're beautiful, actually. Um, it's that Moon Knight. It is not. It is a woman called Spoiler. And as you very well know, Marcus, a uh, perfect type of page in my book. Exactly, Carl. Exactly. But uh, for whatever reason, yeah, like I say, I've, I've had Robin pages before. They just, I don't know, on my sales, I guess I just the crowd that comes here uh, just doesn't, you know, they don't seem to be the Robin collecting type. So, uh, hmm. but that's okay. That's fine. I'm just happy to show it. Let me show this one last time so you get a close up look. There we go. Let me come back to you. Excellent. Okay. And now let me just go right into number 27. And so number by 27 is by Salvador La Roca and Danny Mickey. And it's X-Men 158, page 20 from 2004. Once again, I can't help but say I cannot believe this La Roca run on X-Men is two decades old, Jason. I know. It's crazy. Holy shit. It's crazy. Like, what the hell, man? So, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Crazy man, so yeah, uh, obviously, it's got a great money shot of, of um Juggernaut, everybody. That's why I liked it and bought it. Um, I love the Juggernaut in Rage, um, but you also get um <clears throat> Havoc in the two, three out of the other uh, uh panels, and Juggernaut's also in the third panel. Um, you know, what's funny is I this I love Havoc, but I, I hate this costume. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of sellers would never like admit to it because you know they're trying to sell something. But you know me, like I'll tell you the truth no matter what, right? Cab like, claimed it already. Oh, oh, okay. Don't don't don't, don't, don't knock it. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know I do that all the time. You know I do that. Even when I'm trying to sell something, if I hate something about it, I'll still say it. Right. You know, because it's conversation. We're still just talking and making conversation. I didn't like that costume, but I love how it's drawn. It's nice anyway. So, um, okay. So let us go there as always to make it official. Uh, so by 27 and let me pop up. Exactly. Caesar. Exactly. Um, let me see. La Roca means the rock in Spanish. It, cer it certainly does. Um, let me see. Three months and days to heroes. Okay, Juggy. Let me find you. Love Jason. I room. keep going. <laughs> he keeps failing me, Margaret. <laughs> uh, I have already committed. Okay, but I saw that one, but let me see where you're Yeah, at. go. Ah, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It is official by 27. I'll mark that down for cab. And here we go. Yeah. Order. All right. Thank you, Cab. I appreciate it. Yes. And let me get this away. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, well, Cab always knows. I, I, I often have things sitting here to ship to him eventually anyways. And he likes me to keep piles to save on shipping, you know, which I am happy to do for people. Um, Yo, so so I often have stuff just accumulating, accumulating over months, and then eventually, okay, here's one happy package or whatever, you know. Um, okay, everybody, thank you. Um, it's been really great. And thank you again to all those of you who have um, come by tonight to, to, to check this out, and especially those of you who have stuck around um, for the, the entire duration. Um, for those of you just watching on repeat, on rewind, um, I thank you. So thanks for checking this out as well. There's still 70 strong. So that's amazing. I really, really love that. It's about five dozen. Um, so let's just keep this going. So this next piece, again, no joke, Jason, from my collection, don't want to sell it. And I think this one probably won't sell because it's one of the 
very few pricier pieces. It's not a three-figure piece. I want it to have at least almost a handful of uh, over a thousand dollar level pieces. <clears throat> so I, I I grabbed something that I didn't want to sell, but I figured at ah, this price plus, yeah, it's it's DC, it's not Marvel. Uh, I probably it, I, I should be safe. So let me show it. But on the other hand, I will admit I have things coming up. A lot of things coming up uh, to buy that I'm buying. I need, I still, you know, I need, I could use the money. So if it's sold, it's one of those things where I'll be bittersweet. Upset. It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet, exactly. I'll be upset. But like I always say, sometimes in this hobby, well, oftentimes, for me, anyways, you got to give up something good to get something else good, right? So if the stuff I, I don't want to let go of, if, if I have to depart, you know, part with it, whatever. So be it. At least I know I'm getting something else that I love at least as much. So we're good. So let's check that out, everyone. And let me see. We're going back to DC on this one. And Oh, sorry. Yes, here we are. DC, this is by 28, everybody. Check it out. A lot of you, by the way, know this one. Um, You've seen it in my cap gallery for years. Oh, cool. Yeah, so by 28, uh, it's uh, 4K by the amazing Dan Jurgens, inked by Norm Ratman. It is the cover to Teen Titans, 100-page comic giant number five from 2018. And, of course, for me, I've always been a lifelong Titans fan, but this for me was all about Deathstroke because I love Deathstroke, I think, even more than the Titans. Um, so that's what it is about to me. I've always want I always wanted to have a really kick-ass, cool uh looking Deathstroke cover. And yeah, man, this uh this fit the bill for me when I finally got the opportunity to get it. So I was like, okay, yeah, this is for me. So yeah, I figured, yeah, like I said, I'll 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 put something in just to offer something a little pricier. Um, and because it's not Marvel, I think, yeah, I should be okay. Nobody, probably nobody will pick this one up, you know? It's um, very it, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, it's a circle of collecting life. Exactly, Carl. Well put. Uh, Caesar says, that one is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, six years old. Uh, that stroke is a pet. Uh, let's not get into that. Uh, he's re referring back to the old days with Terra. For those of you who don't know, um, I mean, obviously, uh, he was. And I remember, Marcus, I remember at the time thinking, holy crap, is this really happening? Are they doing this? Like, what's going on? <laughs> but but somehow, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It made waves at the time, but not obviously since there was no social media. Not the type of waves it would make today, you know. Uh, hey, Gil, what's up, man? Good to see you here. Thank you. Absolutely. I call Chris Hansen on him. <laughs> of course you would. So would I. It is awesome. But okay, enough. I don't want somebody to come in late and see it. Let's get rid of it. Let's get it off the screen so I don't have to sell it. Okay. All right. Excellent. And from there, we're going to go to buy 29, everyone. And buy 29, for buy 29, we go to um, Marvel Black and White Magazines. We sold a piece of art from this gentleman artist earlier this evening. And this is another beautiful, and also just like much like the one that we sold to uh, Southern Comic Geek, this one is mid seventies vintage. For me, Dick Giordano, that's who it is. Dick Giordano, his peak of his career was around the mid seventies. He had been inking Neil Adams, um, and then and then when he would pencil his own stuff, it was that same same illustrative quality that Adams had, just beautiful. And this page, much like the batman hollywood nights page that southern comic geek got earlier this page is also um focused on some women so it's not heroes but it's lady centric so check this one out so this one is a 400 box it's from 1975 from dracula lives uh pay attention to the size it is oversized art everyone um, the image area alone, so from the top of the top panel to the bottom of the bottom panel, that alone is 12 by 18 compared to the usual um, nine and a half typically 
by around 14 and a half to 15. Okay. Um, if you want to go by percentage, by percentages, it, it's actually 44% larger. You get 44% more art hmm. uh, with at this size. So there you go. If that tells you anything. And as you can see there, the bristle board itself is 14 and a half wide by 21 tall. Um, so again, it's Dracula. And uh, the people that you're seeing here um, are Mina Harker, the blonde. The blonde is Mina Harker, um, who at this stage of the story um, still has not been married to Jonathan Harker. And that's Jonathan Harker right there in the middle panel, sick and being tended to by uh, Sister Agnes, I think her name was. I can't remember her name. Um, but at this point in the story, uh, the girls all think he's gone missing and they think that he's died. Um, but Mina is holding on to hope that he's still alive. and. Um, what you see there is the sister writing a letter. She's penning a letter to Mina to let her know that her fiance is still alive. And she receives the letter. And finally here on this page finds out that, um, that Jonathan Harker is still alive. And she's telling Lucy Westenra that, uh, you know, how excited and happy she is about the fact that Jonathan's still alive and that they can, you know, she can still go out to see him and finally get married. Um, and so, yeah, pencils, inks, and washes by the legendary Dick Giordano. Um, and like I said, large art from the mid-70s, what I find to be his peak. Um, so there you go. Uh, the one on the right, of course, is the from the magazine, um, if you couldn't tell. And the one on the left is the original art. So I'm very, very sorry. 22 comments came in since I started talking. I'm so sorry. So give me a chance to at least look at some of those comments, everyone. Um, yes, indeed, Giordano, Kev, did I miss any Cyborg Superman? You did not. I love, hey, aside from Deathstroke Guild, you may not know this, but aside from Deathstroke, Cyborg Superman and Deathstroke, my two favorite DC villains. So I probably wouldn't sell any of my Cyborg Superman art. Um, yeah. So nice track piece, beautiful images. Uh, pretty it is. Uh, six way splash is that in centimeters? It is not. Great classic image, it is. Wow, says Carl. Artistically, very nice page. Uh, CW, what's up, man? Um, great last panel, yeah. So, Sister Agnes, all along, like that one. I never drink wine, nice. If she's not married, why is she Mina? Well, she's not Mina Harker yet, but she will be. But everybody knows her more as Mina Harker, not Mina Murray. But yes, on this page, she's still Mina Murray, if you want to make it, right? If you really need to know the exact... At what, time, know. what time did she become Mina Harker? <laughs> <clears throat> you mean the exact time, sir? The exact time. The exact time of the wedding. And she said, I yeah. do. Yeah, when right? was the wedding? I was like, okay, time it. Time of death, right? But instead, yep, it was nice. time of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Do a dramatic reading. I will not. I will not. Um, but there you go. Okay, let us move on, everybody. Um, so from there, let us go to, let me see. This is for Mike, right? Oh, just wanted to make sure she wasn't his sister. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Who, what's, for, what's for Mike? Uh, this next one is the one that you said would be for Mike. Let me see. What's next? What's next? Let me see. It is. <laughs> Mr. Ennis Art, not so nice himself. Mike Dellery, if you're still there watching, just tell me. I, look, it's not like I expect him to buy this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if you guys remember the show and tell we did together, it was like, you know, the least of mainstream you probably show and tell I've ever done. If you're familiar with his collection, you know the kind of things you kind of expect to see in his in his gallery. Mm -hmm. So when I look at this page, all I'm saying is, as I see it, I'm like, yeah, that's a Mike page if I've ever seen one. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's take a look at it. Why don't we? Okay. It's from Dark Horse, everyone. So it's uh, one of the few non-Marvel and DC pieces. It's a splash page from Dark Horse. It's from a comic called, um, check it out. Smoke Ashes, which was a graphic novel put out by Dark Horse. 
um, illustrated by Richard Pace. Actually, the, the graphic novel was so long, it's illustrated by a ton of great artists. Um, so Richard just did a, a section of it. Um, Colleen Doran did, did a, a bunch of pages for it. I think Bill Stankiewicz did. Yeah, a whole bunch of artists. Um, so there you go. It's page 340. Um, it's smaller art, everyone, just FYI. So take a look at that uh, on the left-hand side of the slide. It is eight and a quarter by 11 and five fifths. And it is 11 years uh, old from the graphic novel uh, from 2013. Um, so I don't know what's happening to this guy. I don't know. But it doesn't like, look good. No, it doesn't look good. But yeah, I look at this, and like I say, it just looks like a Mike Dellery. It look, it says it, it's got Mike Dellery written all over it. It's the kind of crazy, <laughs> wacky, weird thing going on that uh, that I could see in this collection, you know. So um, yeah, I just figured whatever, might as well put it out there. And because uh, I just I just think it's visually interesting, you know, for 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 no other reason than that. Uh, Delir, bye. Um, hey, man. He must he must have taken off because I would have expected him to at least make some some backhanded comments at me about this, you know. <laughs> so Mike obviously has left the building. All right, we don't even get to see some fun. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Reminds me of the beautiful stories for ugly children issue. I used to buy beautiful stories for ugly children. Wow, you reminded me of something that I haven't even thought of since it came out, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, exactly, because it's got that it's the same scratchy pen style, you know? Wow. But you haven't read the story. Okay, okay. No, but what I'm saying is that it looks like it just it just it spoke to me. As soon as I looked at it, I was like, that looks like something I would see in your collection. Like that's just the kind of thing you would buy. Just because it's it's freaky and whatever's happening, it's like hard to make out. Like it's at first I thought, oh, electrocution. And then I'm like, no, it's not an mm -hmm. electric chair, you know. Uh, so I don't know, but whatever's happening looks like it's not going to be good, as you say, Jason, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I figured I'd put something different. Why not? But okay, let us move on, everybody. And from there, let us go to um, number 31. And uh, yeah, so, so for 31, we go to DC. And this is a cover, the cover to Electric Warriors, number one. Um, uh, these days, a very, very affordably priced first, well, any cover really, but a first issue cover at that. And it's by, um, the amazing contemporary artist, Travel Foreman. I don't know. Some of you may be familiar with him. Um, he does some really nice stuff. Um, and yeah, I just really like the way, uh, that, that this one looks. Of course, I wish that some of the background had been put in, uh, manually instead mm -hmm. of digitally, but yeah. you know, but can't be choosers it is what it is um but let me show you just because the um the logo and everything is is on a on a translucent overlay let me show you this so you can see without the overlay so it it is removable there you go and uh, yeah but I, I, I like with most people most people like to see i guess like that um so there you go uh, for the sci-fi lover in your family. How about that? Um, so here we go. Let me see. Mike is saying, I just bought some toy box art today. Okay, that's fun. First for your collection. Yeah, that, but toy, toy box art is always fun. Page really looks like it has cool lines on it. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I can tell you for sure, my friend, that... Let me come back to you. I can tell you for sure... It is not um, a logo produced at DC. It's definitely done aftermarket. I have no idea. I have no idea though who 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 put it on there, who made it. I, otherwise, I'd tell you. But yeah, no idea. <clears throat> okay. So next piece, number thirty-two. Let's go to that. We go back to Marvel. And for that, we go to an affordable, an affordable Spider-Man page. Also. Almost a quarter of a century old. Basically the same price as any random Spidey-filled panel page that any artist would be charging today for an issue drawn this month. You know? So you're not, you're not, you know, you don't have to pay a vintage premium, you know? A, a, a premium for the fact that it's already 24 years old. 
Uh, it's by Rurik Tyler and Bud LaRosa from Web Spinners, number 16. Uh, four panel page with Spidey in three out of the four page. Well, technically he's in the fourth panel as well, but he's so tiny, I don't count that. Um, so there you go, yeah. Terrible coloring in the early age of computers, of course. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's, uh, sometimes I really hate having to uh, put the color image, you know? It's like, oh my God, it makes it look so bad. Um, are you kidding me? Thwip, thwip. Um, yeah, but uh, you know what's also interesting, just as a point of uh, uh, a fact here, Rurik Tyler, back in 2000, he was on this title drawing it, and he was also writing it. And the mm -hmm. reason I think that's an interesting point to make is simply because at never at any time in this industry has any penciler had an easy time of getting to also write books, let alone <clears throat> write same book that he is scheduled to draw it's very rare they really the publishers do not like the artist to also be the writer um and that is typically reserved for people who have been you know in the business for quite a long time already and people who have proven that they can always hit their deadlines with the artwork to begin with mm. you know? Yeah, because if, if if you if you're known for having missed deadlines already, even if it's only once or twice, whatever, they don't the editors don't forget that, you know. And if you're one of those people, and you ask, "Hey, I really like to to write the book too," they're gonna say, "Like, yeah, just be happy you have a a, a gig. You you know, be happy you have the job drawing still, you know, right. that you're still getting a, a a gig for that." So, so yeah, because Rurik Tyler, who's ever heard of Rurik Tyler? Right. You know, so for him to also have been writing the book, it's like, wow, that's shocking. It made me wonder if at the time, was he a guy that they had pulled from some other entertainment field or something? Maybe he was already a writer, mm -hmm. or, you know, TV or, or whatever. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I've never, I never sought him out on Google or anything. So I don't know anything about the guy. Okay. Thank you everybody for allowing me to give that uh, bit of information on the page uh, and the right, uh, the artist. Um, let us go to number 33. So for number 33, we are reverting back to DC. And for this, we are going to a commission um, of a very popular DC character. And it is gigantic. All right. So here we go. By number 33, it is by legendary Spaniard Esteban Maroto. Famous for all the black and white magazine work that he did, both at Warren and Marvel. And for those of you who are not familiar with that material, you may know him as having done work at DC on um, in the mid to late 80s. I want to say maybe between 85 and 87. He did work on an Amethyst miniseries, also a title... Uh, around Aquaman. I, I believe it was called Atlantis Chronicles, but I could be wrong. Uh, but something to do with Atlantis. Um, so very, very romantic, illustrative stuff he always did. Um, and so as you can see there, this board, it's, it's done on a board that um, measures 19 and 3 quarters inches wide. That's not the height, that's the width. All right, so it's wider than a standard Comic art page is tall, and it is uh, just over 25 and a half. It's 25 and 5 eighths inches tall. Um, again, for point of reference and context, if you want to know, get a sense of the size of Wonder Woman herself. From the top of her head to the bottom of her boot, her figure alone is just over 14 and a half inches tall. Hmm. Okay? So that basically fills up the entire image area from top to bottom on a standard um, comic art page, okay? And um, <clears throat> let me see. It is not the same shipping, somebody asked. Uh, let me see. Uh, Marcus, of course. It is not the same shipping. I don't know what it is, but it's gigantic, so... But I can tell you it would be no more than 50 bucks, and it could still be even less than that. So still 
cheaper than it would cost to send you guys a standard size piece. Um, oh, thank you, Chuck. Chuck is here, everyone. Good evening, Chuck. Good to see you. Atlantis Chronicles. Thank you. Crack that whip. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this that is it is indeed a huge piece. Invisible plane is behind there. Exactly. So you get the bonus of the invisible page. So that's right. awesome. Uh, that's huge. I have Venus. <laughs> I have Venus Envy. I love it. And I also, I figured just to, <clears throat> just to get, to give you guys more sense of context, let me come back to you. Okay. And let me do this if I can. Um. Hold on. Okay. All right. Let me show you by holding it how big it is. All right. And let me give you context. This way. So yeah, that's standard, big. standard piece of eleven by seventeen bristle, and in comparison, yeah. So it's monstrous in comparison, absolutely. So as you can see, if this had been drawn on eleven by seventeen board, obviously the accoutrement would not fit, meaning her lasso would not fit, but. Yeah, it would be a, an immensely large figure of Wonder Woman. It would go from top to bottom of the board. So, so there you go. Let me put that down. This down. Okay. And there you go. You can't get better context than that, right? Okay. And now let me come back to you here. Um, let's go. All right. Uh, and then we switch it back. Okay, cool. All right. And let me see. So let's see. That would look. That would, I agree. That would, it would look badass framed, like a lot of art would. I think you 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 pick it up, you pick it up, Tom, and you frame it. I think I think that's what you should do with it. I, I agree. Uh, to show it wasn't off the shelf. Yes. <laughs> you agree. This time it's really sick, right? Yes. I would think so. Does it have a COA? I have no idea why you would ever ask that. I hope you're being sarcastic. I really hope you're being sarcastic. Otherwise, I'm gonna feel I'm gonna have to rip into you a little bit. And I don't want to do that, Tom. Um, COAs are hot. No, they're not. Okay. So that was 33, everybody. Only just a couple of pieces to go here. Um, all right. So the next piece is marble. It is number 34, and so this is a circa mid to late 70s Marvel piece. It is by the artist Ken Landgraf, and those of you uh, who may not be aware of who Ken is, he only spent, I would say, between two and three years um, after he broke in. So this was a tryout piece to try to get work at Marvel, done sometime between 75 and 77. In 1977, he broke in. And so he ended up working at both Marvel and DC between the years 1977 and 1981. And he may or may not have done a couple of things here and there after that, like in 83, I want to say. Um, I think he spent most of his career doing um, different sorts of illustration art uh, outside of comics. Um, but this was a fun, uh, a really, really fun sort of piece of Marvel history in the sense that not only does it offer um, uh, an insight, a little bit of insight into the process that, you know, people go into trying to become professional comic book artists, but I like the fact that he was trying hard. He was trying, so he wanted to get in so badly. He wanted to show, see what he's doing here. The reason it's colored is he's trying to show this as an example, not only of, hey, I can pencil and tell a story. I can also ink if you if you need an inker, and I, I can color if you need colorists, you know? So 
Um, that's what makes it really sort of unique uh, in terms of tryout pages. Most people with tryout pages um, since then only essentially do pencils or pencils and inks, you know? Um, yeah, and, and, and actually got to say, given that it's a tryout page in his, from his pre-pro career, it's actually pretty good stuff. It is. It is a pretty cool piece. Yeah. So. And to have so, it all colored, yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah I can't believe that it's it's that old too. Um, COAs are made available on all Bob Kane art. Avengers tryout. I never read that series. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Uh, Doom hiked up his skirt by panel five. <laughs> and we have my friend Ian deciding to take it. Awesome. Let me listen. 1975. It's almost 50 years old. You know, for 300 bucks, it's a nice piece of Marvel history. So, excellent, making it official. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate it. And let me see. So, this is number 34. So, we'll put Ian. There we go. Put that one down for you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, very nice. Let me get rid of that. And we'll come back to you here. And uh, yes, congratulations. Yes. Oh, yeah, right, hoarders. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> well, I was going to lowball him. You see? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you twice as much, Ian. <laughs> you, you, you know, you can ball me, you low, low ball me for something else after. I don't know. We may not even do a. a Whatever we call it, recapping. Uh, uh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome, Ian. I don't know what you're laughing at, Dan. As long as it's not me, though, I'm cool. Laugh at somebody else. Uh, it wasn't a foldy. What do you mean by that? Oh, foldy. I don't know. I don't know that one. I have to with all these expressions, I, we have to decipher. He always makes me work hard, you know, every week. He's too hip. I can't keep up with it. Uh, He's too hip. He's definitely too hip, for sure. For sure. Uh, uh, okay. All right, everybody. Almost done here. So let us go to the next piece. Uh, so two more pieces, and then I will ask you the vaunted question as to whether you, you we should waste our time doing the recapping anything, okay? So the second to last piece is one last bookmark for you all, and that is... A piece of Darren from the Meridian series, which was really fun, um, by the amazing Steve McNiven, uh, who is a fellow Canadian, not that you guys care, and inked by Tom Simmons. And uh, yeah, not, nothing else to say other than it is Darren, uh, the main character of Meridian. Well, one of the main characters. She, she, so the main character is Sefi, so S-E-P-H-I-E. So she was the cute girl who was the, the protagonist. Um, and Darren was essentially like her self-appointed protector slash bodyguard, if you will, for those of you who did not read the series. Um, so yeah, friends, protector, bodyguard, whatever. Um, yeah. And so early McNiven, uh, which looks a lot more like the days when he was doing more of a Gulesi. It looks like more of a Paul Gulesi styled um, style. Um, which makes it very interesting all on its own as well. Well, there you have that. And we have what? Wallywood Spectre Foldy. Okay, that's what you were saying earlier. Alleged Wallywood Spectre Foldy, or else he'd be all over it. Uh, Ruben, the Foldy Wood den Oh, ah, the Wood Denier. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So funny. Why do they all look like supermodels? So they fit in the bookmark. Well, exactly. 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 Well said, my friend. My, what a big belt buckle you have. <laughs> uh, talk about your instant bookmark collection. There you go. Okay. McNiven. Now, I know, and I know everyone that they're not, uh, you know, the biggest super in demand pieces. But when you think about it, if you just go by name value, artist name value alone, this has been a pretty amazing show. Mm -hmm. You know, like your McNivens and your George Perez, and and you know, there's a bunch of like big, big names. Um, but of course, I, I, I the whole intent was to do lower end affordable stuff, you know. So okay, so with that being said, let's get to the last uh piece. 
And the last piece, oops. Um, the last piece finishes with a DC piece. And for that, we go to this piece, which, so it's got two pieces of art. It's got the front, and then there's something on the back. So I'll show you the front. We'll talk about the front. Okay. This one is from my collection. So again, I'd rather it not sell. But it's, again, it's a bittersweet piece because it's more, it's, it's on the pricier uh, level of tonight's stuff. Um, and so I could use the money to buy other purchases I have coming. But I'll keep it if I have to. I'd like to keep it if possible. All right. Um, here we go. This is number 36. Yeah, 36. So this is Infinity Inc. Uh, from number 30, page 20. It's a Crisis on Infinite Earths tie-in from 1986 uh, by Todd McFarlane and Tony Dezuniga. And so, again, I was saying this is from my collection, and that's because the reason I wanted it is because uh, Superman was on it. So as a Superman fan and collector, um, I thought it's a rare opportunity to get a Todd McFarlane Superman. He did not do uh, uh, very much of that character. And at the same time, really supremely loved that the Golden Age Robin on the left-hand side of the page, he's got one of those classic McFarlane Batman capes. Yeah. Right? It's a thousand dollars a fold for that cape. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, of course, as an extra bonus, um, you get one Infinity Inc. character. Uh, we got Star Spangled Kid and one JSA character in everyone's favorite bosom buddy, Power Girl. Um, but yeah, for me, it was all about you know having the Superman and the Robin with the killer Batman styled cape. Um, now, um, okay, hold on. I see a bunch of people talking. Uh, great capes, McCape, cool, nice Robin and Superman, Illos, holy capes, uh, McFacade, nice. Oh, damn, that's cool. Uh, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. Damn, thanks, Rick. I don't know. Okay, so Jason popped in. Um, okay, so you can. Help Jason out for me, will you? I uh, can't deny who the artist is with that Robin K for sure. And Chuck says, a lot of Infinity Inc. stuff. I didn't look as McFarlane asking this this one does with the capes. And right, exactly. The design-wise, exactly. Thanks for pointing that out, Chuck. Um, yeah, and, and just as a, as a point of reference also, everybody, um, I also want to mention that um, price-wise, um, I did some. I looked for some comps, and the most recent uh, piece that I had seen that I could find was a piece that, admittedly, I don't have a minute an image for you here, uh, but it was one which I found content-wise definitely not as high as this page. And the main character was Doctor Bones, or sorry, Mister Bones. Um, so you know. People who love the series and love a golden age, you know, Infinity Inc. and JSA art, they like Mr. Bones. I do too. But again, as a character, standing standalone character, he doesn't typically carry you carry a ton of value. And anyways, that page went for somewhere in the 26 to 2700 range. Um, and I had also seen pages that sold um that sold uh, before that, uh, not long before that were also similar in between 22 and 2700. And yes, I know, you know, the whole Mr. Bones or whatever is, is like a spawn prototype, but not really. And it's like, to me, it's 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 a coincidence, unless you know that we can find online somewhere where, where McFarlane admits that it, you know, it was a prototype. I don't think so though, because I believe he said that spawn, he had he had thought about spawn already as a kid, as a teenager or something. The spawn had already been conceived way before Mr. Bones did. Um, so, yeah. So, there you go. So, I figured, yeah, with having Superman alone, um, that, that that's where you see the extra premium um, for Superman and for the Batman-ish cape on the Golden Age Robin. So, that's where you see, uh, yeah, that uh, uh, that premium over the comp, the comps that I found. 
Um, let me just show you also the back, just so you know, the back of this artwork has a ballpoint pen mixed with marker, black marker. Where is it? Let me find it. Um, illustration of Jack Kirby's The Demon. Here we go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And you're seeing on the left-hand side, you're seeing the entire board. So you have all the context for the size of this um, illustration of the demon. Um, so quite, quite large. And um, you probably don't see, or if you see it faintly, underneath the demon, it, it says in a blue pencil in McFarlane's writing, um, it says Jack Kirby's The Demon or Jack Kirby's Demon. And you see his old uh, Todd McFarlane, Todd M signature right there above the demon's right toe on his right foot. So extra bonus there on the back. There you go. Okay. Good and night, that is that. And, oh, Ruben and Jason Peeps, I've got to run. Can't keep the girlfriend waiting. I know you can't. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Carl. I'll let you know if I ever find any Katie Keen art, I'll reserve it for you. I won't even put it on my site. Have a good one, man. I hope to see you next week again. Um, good night. Is it possible to pay for this piece at the beginning of next month? Like, you could have asked me that privately, you know? Um... As you know, you owe me uh, money for something else, so I could have told you that privately. You see what I'm saying? Um, let's talk privately. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You'll be fine. Um, okay, so um, do what deal? Do the deal? Oh, what, with you for 25 bucks? <laughs> yeah. Um, it is it, it's a really great back of the page. Yeah. Uh, Margaret, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for not only popping in, but for hanging out for the entire duration of the show. Love having you. It's been years. Um, not that I want to call you out on it, but when we were chatting privately, I think it's been like at least two years now, you never replied to my last email I sent you. So I'm not trying to call you out to be mean. But I just want you to know, I think you forgot me. You might still have gotten busy. I'm assuming you were busy. But I still have our old email chain from, from back then. And you ghosted me. I was so sad. But uh, I appreciate you. Thanks again. And hopefully you can um, tune in some other Sundays, not only just on for sale shows. Maybe you can come and hang out when we do either show and tells or um, just hangouts and chats about the hobby. Okay. So have a good evening. And uh, thanks again for dropping by. And uh, look at that. She even admits it. She's so, she, yeah, see, you're nice enough to admit it. Oh my God. I think you're right. Uh, that's okay. Uh, feel free. If you still have them, feel free to answer me now. Um, otherwise I can all, always, you know, reply to you on your last message and then, and then you can reply back to me. That's fine. No problem. Um, thanks again for being here, though, uh, in all seriousness. Um, I cut off, too, if he's a fan of Deathstroke. What? I cut off? Cut it off? I cut oh, off. I cut it off, too, if he's a fan of Deathstroke. What do you mean? You hate Deathstroke? Uh, concessions for youth. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that, Margaret. It's so nice for the first time in one night on my channel, three females were here on the same night. I love that. It's so rare. Okay. And two of them are collectors. One of them is my wife who doesn't collect. She's just here to support me. <laughs> two of them are collectors. So that's so nice. And it's so nice to see. Thank you, Karen, for being so nice to her. Um, that's what we need. Supportive of each other in the hobby. That's so cool. Um, don't feel awful. Don't feel awful. It, it happens sometimes. I get it. Don't worry about it. Um, I don't want to call you out, but I will. Exactly. <laughs> you know me, CJ. I got to be me. Uh, he's Margaret Lee. Come back when he has guests on the channel. He talks even more then. You know it. You know it, Scott. <laughs> okay, excellent. So now, um, thank you, everybody, again, um, for being here. That is technically the end of the sale. Um, look at that. Tab has to like speak up on my behalf. No worries, Margaret. Ruben is just kidding. <laughs> yeah. 
She knows, man. I made it pretty clear that uh, it's not a big deal. She knows. Come on. And um, making up. I'm. I, yeah, that's right, Marcus. Marcus missed the fact that last week I was very silent. He said I only spoke for 20% of my usual amount. <laughs> so he figures, yes, I'm making up for it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was thinking, shit, people are probably happy. Like, wow, he probably finally shut up. We can't usually get him to shut up. He finally shut up for once, you know? Um, my wife isn't even bothering to sit next to me. <laughs> um, okay, so as I said, so end of the show. So now, show of hands online, that means yes or no in the, in the, in the comments field. Please type in Y or N. How about that? Because I know you're all lazy. A lot of you can't even hit the thumbs up. Yes or no? Do you need me to go through this stuff or can we call it a night? Do you, do you, do you, I'm giving you a fair chance. Do you need me to review the stuff quickly or not? Like if you're if 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 you were making, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna okay. So I got one no from Tom, one yes from Southern Comic Geek. Marcus says only if you lower prices now. What do you mean now? Um, I will lower the price maybe if you make me an offer. I'm not going to start coming up with prices. Like, you know the prices. The prices are there. You just shoot out whatever. If you really want to make an offer, whatever it's worth to you, feel free. I don't mind. The worst I can say is no or I'll count their offer or something, you know. But you come up with the price. You know my asking price. I'll tell you yes or no or we'll make a deal. Whatever. Um, so Rick says no. No, thank you. Call it. Karen says no. Tom says yes. That's a, it's only two yeses. I think that's only two yeses. Yeah. Southern comment. Um, well, Tom, Tom, <laughs> Tom and Southern comic geek. If you really want to see this stuff and I don't do it, I can send you guys a link and you can pop into the, the chat with me and you, you two and myself, we can do it together or alone. Margaret says, no, she's still here. She had so much fun that she stuck around even after she said bye. Movie talk time is not movie talk time. Yes and no, so that means nothing. Why don't you give some time for people to ask what they might be interested in? Well, nobody's asking. Most, most people are saying no. Can we get McDonald's? I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, look at that. Maki, Maki Poo Poo. Didn't we sell 29? No, we didn't. Okay, let me just jump. Let me jump to see that first before I make a decision. Let me go back here. So... Oof, a full, a full 25% off, man. Okay, Maki Poo Poo. Maki Poo Poo. Are you, are you able to, are you able to make it um, three and a quarter and are you able to do it also by friends and family? I want to do it for you. Tell me if you can do that. Can you do three and a quarter friends and family? Let me know. And hold on. Let me jump back in here. Um, so we make it official. Yes. Thank you, sir. Happy to make the deal for you. So here, let me, let me do that. So 29. Okay. Maki. Five. Okay, excellent. F and F. Okay, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, let me come back. Let me get this off. Sorry, let me get this off the screen. Okay, let me jump back into the comments. And, um, okay, so nice, yes, thank you, do the right thing, fair counter offer, thank you, yeah, congrats. Um, um, technically, I, I, I did say that, but I also said that for certain pieces, for certain reasons, people might be able to do it. So and it might not be to my account, by the way, just so you know. Um, yes, exactly, number one Marvel fan. It used to be my number one method of payment, my only method of payment, really, until they screwed me. So what, what are you going to do? 
Um, the, the friend or family, congrats, great friend. All right, good cab, okay, thank you. I bet we'll get PP messed, <laughs> messed up. Have a great night. All right, later, uh, Hart. Thank you so much for tuning in. Night, Hart. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to have an uh, what? Making an exception as the amount also won't be held by PayPal. Uh, true, but then if I do that to a bunch of people, the, the amount will start to be held because it'll add up and it, and it gets to that limit, that ridiculous limit so quickly, you know? Um, I'm glad you were mesmerized by Mina. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, bedtime. Good night, Vivian. Good night, Vivian. And okay, um, so let me see the one third DPS S again. The two page, the double page spread that is a screen lantern. No? Yeah. Why, why uh, do you make my life? Why do you make my life difficult, though, Scott? Why can't you just say the title, the, the name of the book? Like, uh, um, good night, good night. The spread and splash. So the ion one with with green yeah, lantern. That's the one. That's the one. Are you sure that's it? Good night, Tom. See you next week. But we'll talk soon. Yeah, hoarders, ion. Okay, the problem is, is I gotta rifle through everything. Um, and and, and by the way, Tom Kadzalovsky and uh, sorry, who was the second, the first person who said it was? Oh, stop, oh, Jason, Southern Comic Geek. Like I said, let me guys know, and I'll send you guys. I send you. I'll send you guys if you want to. We can rifle through the stuff together, um, privately. Um, so just let me know. Okay, thanks, uh, Jeffrey C. Helping out, awesome. Um, by sixteen, so let me go to that. Oh yes, okay. So this one. So you want to see? I, I think is this it, Scott? Let us know. Let me go back and forth so you can see what it looked like with the colors in the published version. And here we go again, back to the black and white. Yeah, and that's so that's that's um Kyle Rayner and his dead girlfriend. Um, so I guess it's it's he's like in a fantasy land, so to so to speak. You know, I I, I haven't read it, so I, I I'm assuming um just all these dead people come back to life. I, I flipped through the comic and I saw other people visit him. So it's like they're ghosts, basically, you know. Um, yeah, so there you go, by Greg Bikini. And uh yeah, 2006. There you go um so in the meantime yeah let me know red refrigeration sensation um let me know tom katzlovsky and jason let me know if you want to pop in with me privately because you're the only two people who said yes that they want to see um okay tom so not you that's good no problem no worries i appreciate it um so jason you're the only one if you want to do a private showing i can do that for you let me know. Otherwise, we're gonna call it a night. As Sounds we, good. as we, yeah, as we, yeah, wrap this up. Um, so yeah, so we're definitely not gonna do it publicly. That's that's for sure. I can I can say that we can call it a night on that. Um, so thank you again, everybody. No, for okay, making it official. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And it wasn't buying. We still enjoyed the show and tell. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, that's what's kind of fun about it too. It's still. Even if you're not looking to buy, it serves as a as a show and tell as well, you know. Um, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Carl. I look forward to your next video. Uh, everybody, again, please check out Carl's two latest videos that he dropped this week. Um, you can see the links that are live on them at the at the top of the show. So just do it on rewind. Thank you very much, uh, Cab. We'll be in touch. Thank you, uh, Karen. Um, Good night, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Talk to you soon as well. And good luck raising the dough for your big piece. Uh, it pieces, pieces. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Um, look at that. Look who is here. Cheers, cheers to all from Utah. Wow. What are you doing in Utah, Jeff? What's up, Jeff? Wedding. Utah. Wow. And all right. Bye for real this time. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks again. Thanks again. Remember, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern for you. Every Sunday night, we're doing something here, hanging out together, having fun. Okay? Thank you. Thank you again. Have a great week. Good night, Tom. Good luck with your pee-pee. Uh, good night, Maki Poo Poo. Thank you again, as always. Uh, we'll be in touch. Or you know what? Just, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 um, 
I should still have your your address. So if I have your address, I'll check. I'll double check, and I will just. Uh, 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 well, no, actually. I may, I may just send you, if you need an invoice for your records, I may make one because I'll make one for my records anyways, but whatever. I'll, I'll be in touch by email anyway. So thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Say hi to Mika for me. Let her know I said hello. And Tom, good night to you. Thanks for dropping in and, and hanging out, man. Uh, what's on tap for next week, Caesar? Um, Tom McDonald will be doing, I'll be doing a, um, a show and tell, doing a show and tell. Um, and you'll like it because it's uh, basically DC heavy. Hmm. Um, I just kill half my viewership because all the Marvel guys are not showing up next week. Right. Uh, I guess I shouldn't have given it away. Uh, but thanks for dropping in again, man. So thanks again, everybody. I guess uh, we'll be in touch uh, for those of you who bought stuff. And uh, for everybody else, yeah, please come back for the show and tell next week at the usual time, 8 o'clock p.m. And yes, DC. And, um, yeah, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. And, uh, yeah, we'll have some fun again as usual, shooting the shit with everybody. Okay, everybody. Uh, thanks again, Jason. You Appreciate bet. you. Anytime. Bro. Thank you so, so much. Thanks, everybody. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you all next week.